tell you as a pole vaulter, it is, it is sometimes daunting and intimidating to move up a pole. It does give you more resistance, and with that more resistance comes more potential dangers. Uh, an athlete can be uh, put back onto the runway, uh, come down closer to that metal box that's right below them where they plant. We're going to move to triple jump for a jump that we just missed. Our Guelph athlete. So that is Alex Harris. She faulted her first jump, but her second jump was a white flag. So we will get a distance for you for that shortly. Coming in, she is 11th place with a season best of 11.91. 11.67, she's getting closer to that mark. So she that puts her in fourth. So she has a good chance of making the finals from there. So we will have to see. Good for her. All right, we have our Toronto athlete, Kristen Schultz. Comes in ranked ninth in the country. A red flag on the jump. Over in the pole vault, we have Emmanuel Desolet preparing. So Kristen Schultz faulted her two first jumps, which puts a lot of pressure on the athlete to get one in. That's mm -hmm. good for your in your third attempt to make the final. So Kristen Schultz with a foul on the second round, and Brianna Rand will be next on our runway. Brianna comes in ranked eighth with a season's best of 11.98 which is really close to 12, so she will definitely be trying to get into the into the 12s today. So we're able to bring you season's best, but we'll try to see if we can find out if she's been in that 12 meter club before, but uh, our season's best is 11.98. I bet she would like to end this season over 12. Yeah, that would be a great, great way to end the season. In the pole vault, we have Nico Martin Huerta. First attempt, he is um, first ranked coming in with a mark. Ah, second ranked, 11.48 for Brianna in the triple jump. Uh, Nico Nicholas Martin Huerta is competing today with his brother, Ed, uh, Ed Eduardo Martin. And the two brothers are, marked, are ranked second and third, both are from the Trinity Western University. Consulting with his coach there. And in the triple jump, we had Callista Elliott. I believe, let's see if this is Miss Elliott. Yes, it is. A bit over the toe on uh, her second phase of her triple jump, bringing that forward rotation momentum. Uh, she'll make some fixes on that so that she is. And here's Ed, the big brother, up and over. Ed, Eduardo Martin Puerta, successful. So this is Jada Roach on the runway with a fault. She currently is sitting in eighth place, which puts her, puts her in a tight spot going into the third round. Mm -hmm. Over in pole vault, we have Emmanuel Desley. Perfect jump. We're now at 445 in the pole vault, and Emmanuel executed that perfectly. That pole gave him a perfect amount of resistance. He's currently at a 65 depth. Mechanically, a beautiful pole vault. He'll just want to focus on those basics for the next height at 455, and he'll be up and over. 
on the runway. It looks like Clody Vidamor from the Windsor Lancers. Chloe's season best, 12.15. see if she's made the runway. It is a white flag. It appeared as though she made a few very short adjustments in her last few steps to make that runway, to be safe. And so with some adjustments, she will likely be able to open up that speed a little more and bring acceleration. And we have Jules Lebrecq up and over at 4.45 in the pole vault. Great jump there from Chloe. Julie Breck may be looking for. So 11.30 for Miss Vita Moore on the last jump. And we have a new competitor entering in the pole vault. This is Bennett Woods from the Guelph Griffins. He's coming into the competition, 4.45 first attempt. Perfect execution. His hip, hip height was in line with the bar. The pole gave him an excellent amount of resistance. He entered into that vertical position very nicely and as a result was successful on the jump. So we have Hannah Jodouin that just jumped in women's triple jump. Great. We are still on air second round, so we ha still have... We're now moving to the 11 meter board. Next on the runway we have Aram Blagoji. And I believe we also have Olamide Olaloku on the, on the 11. Mandy Brunette, Chloe Knox. And in the pole vault there with the recap, Bennett is in the competition. So that is 11.89 for Hannah Jodouin, which is an improvement from her first jump. And that puts her into fourth currently. Max Spicer is going to be talking about that vertical rock back again. Yep, he wants to get into that vertical position by moving the hands quickly. Setting him up for a faster vertical position. May even be considering, depending on where he is in his poles now. Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third and final day of the 2024 Youth Sports National Championships here in Winnipeg, Manitoba in the James Daly Fieldhouse. We are about to get underway on the track very shortly with the start of the 600 meter finals. But before that, make sure you head on over to the field stream where we have a number of events happening, including the women's triple jump and the men's bull vault. So some exciting action happening over there for the moment. Before we get into the 600s, we want to make sure we give everybody a little uh, reminder of the exciting events that we've been having over the last couple days. Uh, to start, I'm joined here by Darby Goodall, former Bison athlete and 600 meter athlete, who's going to be talking to us through the 600. Darby, what's been some standout events for you in the last two days? Um, well, being a Bison, I'm a little bit biased, so I think the 60 meter was really, really exciting to see that, as well as Max Weiser in the heptathlon. That one was really exciting to watch. Yeah, the heptathlon was a great event uh, all the way through, and, and congratulations to Max on his win there. We're actually going to take you through uh, all the award winners uh, over the last two days, uh, starting on Friday, or pardon me, Thursday afternoon with the women's weight throw. Women's weight throw Thursday or Friday after or Thursday morning <laughs> afternoon. I'm getting my days mixed up. It has been a long, <laughs> long day here. Uh, women's weight throw first place was Phoebe Price Roberts of the Toronto Varsity Blues, followed by Alexis Johnson of the University of Calgary, and third place was Liv Sands of the Western Mustangs. So some really incredible throws there. S uh, winning time 17.98 meters. So a terrific performance there. After that, we went right onto the track for the men's and women's 60 meter dash they did the heats and prelims on third or pardon me heats and finals on thursday and some really exciting results uh on the women's side we had audrey leduc of laval 7.26 uh second place vivian ogre ogre of western mustang 7.33 third place donna intimbui of gill 7.37 so some really exciting times there following that up was 
the 60 meter men's, which included Jordan Sufi of the Manitoba Bisons going 6.69, Tyrell Davis of the Manitoba Bisons going 6.73 right behind him, and Kenny Blackman Jr. of the Trinity Western Spartans 6.76. So really incredible. This was what you were talking about, a really exciting performance for the Bisons on that first day. Thursday, we also included the men's and women's 600 meter prelims, and we'll get to those heats, or the final, uh, final list for today's event shortly. Uh, we also had the women's uh, pentathlon wrap-up, which was another incredible event. We saw Sienna McDonald, who has gone on to have a very long weekend uh, full of success. Uh, Sienna McDonald placed first uh, with a score of 4,164 points. Followed behind her was Rebecca Parker, the Guelph Griffins, 3,794, and Allison Edwards of the University of Calgary, 3,793. So a really close finish there between uh, two and three, uh, between Parker and Edwards. So yes. a, a really incredible event. We've gotten to see these athletes kind of pop up uh, all over the place the last couple. Yeah, those multi-event athletes really are impressive. They can do it all, so I'm always in awe of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sienna McDonald will hear her name a couple times and probably again today too. <laughs> uh, moving to Friday, we had the men's weight throw competition. Uh, Bella Hassar of Laval, uh, 21.22 meters uh, for first place. Graham Wright of the Manitoba Bisons, 18.65 meters. You can see it there on your screen. Joshua Soulsley of the Bisons, right behind the teammate, 17.77 meters. So an, again, we've had a lot of uh, really exciting Bison 1-2 yes, on the podium. Uh, <laughs> after that, we got to go into the men's and women's 60-meter uh, hurdles, which was a very exciting event. I'm going to pull those results up for you in a moment here. First place, like we were talking about, in the women's 60-meter hurdles, Sienna McDonald again popping up, University of Calgary, 8.20. Haley Reed of the Guelph Griffins, 8.30. And uh, Meloy St. Germain of Guel uh, Sherbrooke, pardon me, 8.34. So a really exciting, really close race there uh, yesterday. For the men's 60-meter hurdles, we had Craig Thorne, run 7.81, David Adelai of Toronto, 7.83, and Tamari Lindo of the York Lions running 8.02. So again, we're seeing some exceptionally close times. Absolutely, yeah, that is very tight for one, two there. And some really exciting performances uh, on the field side as well yesterday. We also got to see the women's pole vault uh, finals uh, that included uh, Jennifer Elizarov of Guelph, 4.15 meters. Rachel Granke of uh, the Golden Bear, or, or the Pandas, pardon me, uh, 4.10. And Peyton Saragalio and Alexandra Thornson uh, tied for third place at four meters. So a really, uh, really packed podium yes, uh, on the uh, pole vault <laughs> side. So that was super exciting. We're actually just getting set up on the track here, so we'll finish some of these uh, recaps afterwards. We're just getting set up on the 600, and we're gonna take you there right away for the start of the women's 600 meter finals here today. Some really exciting stuff there. Uh, Darby, what's standing out to you about this field coming up for the 600? I mean, every single one of these girls has performed exceptionally all weekend, and most of them are in multiple, multiple events, so I think that we're ready for a very exciting race, and these ladies are going to give it everything they've got for sure. Absolutely, and you're seeing there right above you was the top performances from yesterday's, or Friday's, Thursday's heat, I'm losing track of my days, <laughs> uh, and you can see their seed times there. So again, as Darby was saying, we just saw Avery Pearson uh, go gold in the 1,000 meter with a terrific final lap, as well as bringing home the gold in the 4x8 that same evening. Yes. Uh, so a very exciting uh, weekend for her. A lot of those women have, were participating both either in the you know, 1,000 and the 4x8 or a variation of those combinations. So yeah. some very exciting stuff. Officials are closing the track, and we're going to get you a good look here at the starting line. Now the first event of the day, which will be the women's 600-meter final. In lane three with the Alberta Pandas, the Can West bronze medalist, Grace Cook. On numero two, de Sherbrooke Berry or Laurie Desjardins. 
In lane three, representing the Saskatchewan Huskies, the Ken West champion, and the 2024 1,000 meter champion this year, Avery Pearson. On numero cat, the Laval Rouge or Emma de Gagne. In lane five, representing the Western Mustangs, she was the, he's the number one seed, and the OUA champion, Favor Okpali. <laughs> and in lane six, from the Calgary Dinos, the Can West silver medalist this year, Tatum Way. Here we have it, that is the final heat, final lineup for the women's 600 meter championship race. Once again, this is a two-turn stagger, so you'll see them cut down on the second turn. They're off quick gun. Looks like Oak Polly is wasting no time. She is not. She is already getting up there and has closed that gap. Absolutely overtaking Dijonier on the outside. Dijonier on the outside. And they're cutting down, and it looks like Opali out front. Followed by Emma Dignagne from Laval. But all of those ladies are really close, so it is anyone's game at this point. Yeah, absolutely, that's Tatum Wade of Calgary, I believe, in third. Avery Pearson in fourth. And Grace Cook of Alberta in fifth. That is a really tight pack coming into the final lap. Already, it is a quick race, that's for sure. Really strong. Emma Dignagne making a move there on the outside around favor of Okapali. Looks like Avery Pearson took a step out as well. Okapali holding them off though. She wasted no time responding to that move by Emma. And it seemed to really light that fire under her. She was trying to put Absolutely. some distance on her. Absolutely. I think at this point the race really is for second or third. Okapali is pulling away. Yeah, absolutely. A really tremendous performance here in the last 200 meters. Okapali coming down the line. For third A real place, stretch. For second place, we see Avery Pearson might have just outleaned Emma there at the end, but we'll get those results soon. <laughs> We're looking at Okapali, and she is ecstatic. Unofficially, yes. 128.6. A really tremendous time. Absolutely, congratulations yeah. to her. That is incredible. Yeah, you just saw, you know, we were talking a lot about that mental fortitude in these races, and you know, the second that somebody started putting a move on her, she kind of took control and, and started moving. She did, response. she responded immediately. As Emma came up on her shoulder, she said, absolutely not, I'm going now, and that's what she did. Absolutely, really. And a tremendous finish from uh, second, third, and fourth, who were basically in a dead line, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, once again, to find live results, head on over to gobisons.ca, click the banner there. Uh, <laughs> you can see the celebration there. <laughs> the, the feeling at the end of these races, you know, achieving what you had set out to do from the start of the season is just indescribable. So congratulations to all the athletes here. Really excited to see that. There you go, your 600 meter U Sports champion, basking in the glory of a uh, job well done. There we go. Looks like Pearson did manage to out lean the two other competitors, Degonia in third. But really a very cool. close race there. Very close. One, yeah. one, two, three, four, neck and neck. Yes. Really strong performance coming into that that uh, final stretch. Darby, what was one uh, one thing that stood out to you the most in that 600? Um, I think obviously those top five girls, they put in a really strong effort and they should all be very proud of themselves because making it this far into the 600 finals at U Sports is an incredible achievement in, in itself. But being able to perform on such a high level is also amazing. So I think all those ladies deserve congratulations because yeah. it was just a wonderful race. Yeah, all six of our finalists there, really tremendous job. Uh, we're going to be moving right along into the men's 600 meter final. Uh, Darby, you're not going to be on for this one, but what is something you're looking forward to uh, for the for this men's heat as well? Um, I think a little bit of strategy might come into play here. We've got two Bisons in the final, so we'll see if they can work together to try to make moves and get their way to the top. But really, it is anyone's game, like we saw with the women's heat. Whoever wants it the most is going to get it, so I'm excited to see who's got it in them today. 
Excellent. Darby, we will likely be hearing from you later today. Yes, uh, I'll be back for the 4x4s, four and I'm very excited about it. There we go. <laughs> we will talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us, Darby. Once again, a reminder, our field broadcast is ongoing on the other side of things, so make sure you head over there to get some, uh, some great insight into our athletes who are performing. Uh, I believe right now we have the women's triple jump and the men's pole vault happening as well as men's shot put, if I'm not mistaken. So some really exciting stuff happening there. We are joined now by Simone Berube, former Bison athlete, former 600 meter athlete, who is going to be talking us through this first and final heat of the men's 600 meter championship. Simone. How excited are you for this race? I'm very excited. The 600 is always a great event to watch. What is something that people should be looking, keeping their eyes on in the in this race coming? Uh, it's going to be fast. I think uh, you just have to go for it in the six. So keeping your eyes on a really quick uh, pace right off the gun. Well, and, you know, we don't like to talk a lot about records and anything like that. But, you know, this record 116 set by Byron Goodwin of the Manitoba Bison a long time ago. You, you train with Dawson Mann, Bison, currently ranked number one in the country. His time has been consistently dipping down. Is that record something that he's thinking about? I'm sure it's in the back of his head, yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of a legendary record for a reason. Uh, fun fact, it was run in this field house as well Absolutely. at the U Sports Championships. So that's definitely something that's probably on his mind. Um, that being said, 116.10 is pretty outrageously fast. Yeah. So <laughs> There's a reason it's been standing since yep. 1995, so we'll see uh, what happens. I wouldn't be surprised to see Savit 118, though. 100%. It's going to be a good race, yeah. We're looking here. You can see the, uh, the top 10 performances of uh, the finals on Thursday and, and our top six qualifiers, uh, Zach James, 118, uh, Ben Tilson, who had a really terrific clo closing performance uh, in the heats, uh, Alex Lerche of... Sherbrooke, uh, Dawson Mann, Tristan Allen, and Thomas Bellado. Simone, who are some athletes that people should be keeping their eyes on? Where do you think that this battle is going to kind of come out? Who do you think is going to come out? Uh, I think Zach James looked really good yesterday. In his, uh, in his heat, he closed pretty well to pass Dawson. Dawson's also uh, been doing really well, consistently 118 low all year. So I think those two athletes are definitely uh, the two main contenders in this race. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing we have to keep in mind, a lot of these athletes we have now seen both in the heats and either in the couple of them in the 4x8 yesterday as well, you know, part of that that team. So a very exciting, uh, it's been a long weekend for a lot of these athletes. Yeah, it, it's probably going to show a little bit on the last lap. Uh, thankfully, they had a whole night to, to rest. Uh, I know both our Bison athletes, Tristan Allen and Dawson Mann, ran the 4x8 yesterday, so definitely not fresh but you know what sometimes it's good to just check out the legs with a race the day before uh that that way you're not feeling kind of rusty yeah going into your race so getting that energy yeah. level up as well and getting right into it we've seen some of the races or some races over the season can tend to be what people might call tactical where somebody tries to set the pace which they can control you don't expect that to happen that doesn't usually happen in six no. uh 600 I usually thought of it as a 400, but hang on as, as much as you possibly can. <laughs> so it's just going to be really fast off the gun. There's no really reason uh, to run a tactical 600. So I expect this to be fast, probably 50 point through 400. Excellent. Yeah. Once again, same as the women, this is a two-turn stagger. Simone, how important is it for these guys to get a good positioning off that, that breakdown? It's pretty key. Uh, big guys, right? Big guys on a pretty small track, so there's going to be a lot of fighting for positioning. Uh, lots of elbows being thrown, most likely. Hopefully, no falls today. Um, yeah, it's it's always about fighting for your spot on that track. Yeah, absolutely. Just a reminder uh, of the women's 600. So we got some technically unofficial times right now, but once again, favor Okapali of the Western Mustangs, 128.64. Avery Pearson of the Huskies, 129.39. Just leaning out, Emma Degagne of Laval, 129.45. So really close finish and then fourth place obviously Tatum Wade of Calgary 129.630 so that 2-3-4 positioning was line, neck and neck yeah right the end. yeah I, was, I had the pleasure to watch it at the finish line and it was very close yeah. it was a really good race to watch yeah absolutely and once again the, those athletes as well we've seen them in the 4x8 I'm sure we're seeing them in the 4x4 later oh, today most definitely yep. yeah all of these athletes are 400 meter runners as well absolutely so yeah. 
Simone, you've been hanging around the track a little bit today. What's the energy like in the building on the last day of uh, the 2024 championship? You know, it's just great out here. Uh, lots of lots of good vibes. You know, people are fighting for, for their team, not only themselves in track and field. It's not always uh, individual sport, especially indoor track, U sports. It's a, it's a team sport, so people are, are wanting to do good for their team. Absolutely, and just a reminder of where we stand right now, talking about the team events. Uh, on the men's side, Guelph Griffin is currently in the lead, 70 points. Manitoba Bisons behind them in second, 47, and Laval in third with 41. On the women's side, Guelph Griffins lead 72 points. University of Calgary tied with them at 72 points. And the Western Mustangs right behind in third, 64 points. We've been talking a lot about team points. We've kind of been mentioning it uh, a little bit Thursday, a little bit Friday. As we've all talked about, though, the team, the team banners pretty much decided on the third day today. Say. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of uh, events on the third day, so it's never really decided after the first day. Yeah. The first, second day, yeah. And there, we, we've been in many competitions where it comes down to that 4x4, four four, that last field event that's in play, and so it's going to be a nail biter. Exactly, sure. yeah. Some exciting stuff. We're just getting set up here. Looks like the gentlemen in the 600 are making their final strides out. Simone, what do you think is going through these guys' head in these final, <laughs> final moments before the gun goes? You know what, I can't exactly speak for everybody, but I was pretty nervous. Uh, it's it's a big race. It's probably some of these athletes' biggest races of their lives right now. So uh, a lot of things going through their heads, but they're probably just, again, looking to fight for a good spot on that track, hang on to the pace, hope they have something left for the last lap. Yeah. And we're going to see it right here in just a moment as these guys get set up. There looks to be a scratch, uh, originally out of lane one. Uh, Alex, Alex La Rochelle doesn't look to be lined up on the track here, so it's going to be five runners in this final instead of six. Interesting. Hopefully everything's okay with Alex. So you got Dawson Mann in lane six, uh, Zach James in lane five, Ben Tilson. Ben in lane Tilson. Four. Tristan out of three, Tristan Allen out of three, and Toma, uh, Toma Pirado out of lane two. Now for a lot of these athletes, this is not their first time being in this position. No, uh, there's a lot of uh, recognizable faces out here that's uh, been here before, for sure. That experience definitely, definitely factors in, you'd say? It does, yeah, so experience, Again, putting yourself in a good spot. It's it's really what is important in the 600. So we'll, we'll see, hopefully, the veterans know how to get out fast and put themselves in the spot to win. Control that lane. You're seeing on your screen there the top 10 performances of the year. So this is uh, all of you sports here. Dawson Man, 117, 178. Thomas Bell, 118. Like the officials are just giving the final commands, make sure everybody knows it's a two turn stagger. Not that any of these guys would ever not know that it's a two turn stagger, but yeah, and just noticing right now, uh, this could be a big event for the Manitoba Bisons, the home team. No Guelph Griffins in this final, two Bisons definitely going to score points for their team. Yeah, absolutely. It's sitting so. in second place right now, so this could be big. So it's exciting. it's exciting to look in the stands. We're packed already. It's you know, early in the afternoon, it's a uh, there's a big crowd pleasing event, for sure. Yes, yeah, just like in 2019, big turnout. Yeah. Love to see it. Looks like we're just waiting for pole vault attempt that completed, so it should be underway right away. Again, be sure to head over to that field stream, check out the exciting events happening there. 
been a ter terrific performance from all the field events this, uh, this weekend. Going through some of the results and just some terrific, terrific stuff out there. There you go, you get a look here. Women's triple jump, men's pull vault. Really terrific vault there. Rest assured, we will be going back to the track stream as soon as things are underway. Do not fret. Don't change the channel. Track is closed. We are going back to the 600 meter. Now, track the men's 600 meter final. On numero 2, the Sherbert Mary Or, Thomas Pedro. Running out of lane three from the Manitoba Bisons, the Can West silver medalist, Tristan Allen. In lane four, representing the Windsor Lancers, the OU weight champion this year, Ben Tilson. In lane five from the Dalhousie Tigers, the OUS bronze medalist, Zach James. in lane six, running for the Manitoba Bisons, the Can West champion this year, Dawson Mann. Here are the competitors, men's 600 meter championship race. Start. And they're going to stay in their lanes for the first two turns here and then cut in for, oh. for lane one. Looks like Ben Tilson is really trying to get out in front of this crowd when they hit that cut down line. The break line there. Yeah, like I said, he wants to get out fast, right? He wants to have that top position, not be in any position to trip up. Looks like James, Tilson, Allen, man, one, two, three, four. Pelodo, a couple steps behind in fifth. Anybody who's been following the season, there are a lot of people who are going to turn it over in the last 200 meters here. Tristan Allen already making a move on the outside there. Looking to get that lead position coming up to the bell lap. One, two, three, four, neck and neck. Anybody's race here. Allen making a push of the bell. 50 seconds at 400. This could be a fast one. Tilson stepping wide. Dawson just behind. Tristan. Allen. Allen pushing on the back stretch, trying to extend his lead, but no one's letting him go. Tilson making a move. Dawson going with him. Dawson Mann, rounding the bend. Dawson Mann kicking for home. Can he do it in front of his home crowd? Dawson Mann, Bisons, one. Tristan Allen. Tristan puts Allen. Puts his arms out. Brings it home for the Manitoba Bisons. What a win. What a performance. Zach James, Dawson Mann. Ben Tilson, neck and neck, right at the final there. Tristan. Tristan Allen is your national champion in the 600 meters. This must mean so much to him. After maybe a heartbreaking loss in the 4 by 8 last night, to comes come back. back comes back and brings it home for the Bison. Incredible performance, 117.9 unofficially. We'll get some official times out there for you shortly. And again, Dawson Mann, really huge kick in that last 100 meters to... to fight for that second position. We won't have official results for you just yet, but very shortly. You can see the tray. Dawson Mann sneaking into third place, 118.44. Tristan Allen first, 117.96. Zach James from Dalhousie, 118.30. Terrific performance. What a huge moment for those Bisons. Bringing home 16 points for their team right now, that is tremendous. There's Allen with coach Andy Tuff. Very excited. A wonderful performance there. Really uh, a commanding, commanding performance there. Uh, we get a look at some of the Bisons in the crowd and they are ecstatic about what this means for you can both really Tristan and the team. You can really see how much this means to Tristan. He works so hard and he deserves all of this. Yeah, a really, and a stellar performance. Tilson took it out really hard, a really strong lead, and it was a fight to that very last, uh, last few steps.
Yep, and Tristan just did the right thing. He went out with the pace really fast, did a, made a move, committed to the move, yeah. made uh, a bid for the front and just held on. Yeah, yeah, a really a really smart run by him. And, and again, uh, a big shout out to Zach James as well. Really strong, took it out in front in a real strong battle. And Dawson Mann in third place, really coming up in that, that last 200 meters. But again, this is what we've been saying, like, the six is, as you described it, it's basically a four, and, and then you just got to give it 100% more effort for the final 200 meters. So it is a grueling oh, yeah. last 150 meters. Yeah, it's 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 a tough event. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else to say other no. than it is a challenge, like all the events here. But, yes, it is, a, it is very difficult. Uh, absolutely. So we have some official um, results came up, as you saw before. Tristan Allen at the first, 117.96. Uh, Zach James of the Tigers, 118.30. Dawson Mann of the Bisons, 118.44. Ben Tilson of the Lancers, 118.75. Thomas Bellado just behind them in fifth. So really strong uh, performance from all five gentlemen in that race. That has to be one of the quicker 600s I've ever seen myself. That, yeah. is, that is a very good time. Yeah. Very, very good field of 600, of 600 meter runners. And a really strong, clean race, top to bottom. There wasn't too much bumping and shoving you know this race can get a little dicey sometimes and what you love to see is just a a flat out fast race where everybody has a space to run their own race yep some would call it a speed train when they line yeah. up like that uh it probably helped that there's only five runners on the track instead of six yeah a little bit more space for them to just spread out and run fast yeah absolutely so some tremendous performances there uh but the action does not stop once again field stream is happening live uh, we have a few more track events today. We have the 4x200 meter finals for the men and women coming up very shortly at about 2.15. After that, we're going to go right into the 1500 meters, which is then going to take us into the final event of the championship, the 4x400, which is sure to end the uh, the weekend on a high note. Simone, what's one performance you're looking forward to uh, for the rest of the afternoon? Myself being a 1500 meter runner, I love that race. It's awesome. We I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but we have... I think three sub four milers in that race, which is definitely never seen before, I believe, in U Sports. So that's shaping up to be an amazing final. Yeah, absolutely. And song if you're check, check. watching here, you're going to be getting a look, I believe, at Max Spizer of the Bisons getting ready for a attempt at pole vault. You can see him there on the runway. It's nice to see everybody getting involved and cheering them on. The whole Bison's crowd went right from the 600 meter finish, right to watch their team made it. There it is. I would love to tell you what that performance means. I unfortunately do not know all the context there, but you know who does? Our commentators on the field stream head over there and they will give you all the information. For now, we're gonna take a break. We will be back with you at 2.15 for the four by 200 meter finals. Thank you for joining us. moves up sticks to, 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 the, to those tougher poles with a lot of courage. It's an intimidating process. So here goes Max. This is a match of a personal best. Trying to get a read on what he might be on. It's a, it looks like a 14 and a half foot pole, maybe even a 15 foot pole. And he's excited about it. Perfect hip height, room to move. Next height for him will be 465. So we had a foul over in the women's triple jump while we were focusing in on that max there for a moment. Alex Harris registered a foul. She does have a mark so far of 1167. And next we have Erem Blagoji from Montreal. So Regardless of the fact that that was a foul in the fourth round, th all of the marks from the previous three rounds still count. They're still on the board. And so Alex has a safe jump in at 11.67. All of these athletes have registered now impressive marks. So if they foul, not the end of the world. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Just regroup and try and get another one in. Yeah. This is where they really can play. Yeah. They can try to get right up to the line, right up to the toe board, to yeah. get as many centimeters out of it as possible. Yeah, as close as you possibly can. Yeah. And 
the pole vault has switched over to another warm-up mode. What happens in uh, vertical jumps is that if there's been an hour that has passed without an athlete coming into the competition, they're entitled to take a little bit of a warm-up. And so some of the athletes who have not entered the competition, I can give you an idea of who's still to come. Uh, we have... Evan May from Montreal, not yet in the competition. And all of the other athletes are in, so just Evan there taking a warm up. Hannah Jodwin. A nice jump. his best mark of the day, 11.89. So that was just Callista Elliott on the oh, runway? I apologize, that was Callista. Got them mixed up. Thank you for catching that. 20, uh, so this is Chloe Vidumour from Windsor starting the a clap in women's triple jump using that enthusiasm from the cloud to really push her. She is currently sitting in fifth. And it is a white flag. Eleven seventy three. Up on the women's triple jump runway, we have Hannah Jodway from Western. Hannah's currently sitting in fourth place. Beautiful jump from her and a white flag. So we'll have to see if she's able to improve. So over at the pole vault, we have Ed Martin Huerta on the runway. We've now moved up to 465. Ed will make some adjustments. Hannah Jodwin. Eleven ninety eight for Hannah. So that is an improvement uh, for the night, um, but that still puts her in fourth place. She's tied. Oh, that's oh yeah, eleven ninety eight. So that'll they're tied for third yeah. right now. So let's see what Olamide Olaloku does here. She's had eleven ninety eight, a foul, and eleven ninety six. For the viewers at home, I'll let you know that. We're likely gonna be moving pretty quickly through these last few triple jumpers. There are eight jumpers left. We're already done the, the, almost done the fourth round. Five and six will move quite quickly. As we're here at the tail end of the triple jump, we're just announcing now the shot putters so we can listen to those announcements. Calgary, Tristan Friesen. 
from the Manitoba Bisons, the Pan West bronze medalist, Joshua Sulzi. From the Carleton Ravens, Ersek silver medalist, Connor Fraser. From Saskatchewan, the Can West silver medalist, Miles Quick. From Laval, the Ersek gold medalist, Anthony Labbe. Alberta Golden Bears, Can West gold medalist, Wesley Easy. From Moncton, the AUS gold medalist, Samuel Bork. Western Mustangs, OUA silver medalist, Seth Edwards. Rounding out the field from the Windsor Lancers, the OUA gold medalist, AJ Stanett. The record in this event set in 2023-1908. So while we were cut away to the introductions for the shot put, we had Olamide Ololoku at 11.85, so still tied in uh, third place. And in the men's pole vault, we had a few misses. And Shun with a miss as well. So uh, we'll be continuing on with our first attempts. We still have a number of athletes to go in the pole vault uh, for this height of 4.65. And over in the triple jump, that was just Mandy Brunette from Windsor. She's currently sitting in second. A gorgeous jump. Excellent, excellent phases. Hang time throughout 12.25, which brings her up. Ah, her best for the day is still 12.56, but consistently over 12 all day long for Mandy Bennett Brunette. Our leader, Chloe Knox. Her best so far, 12.72. She's currently in the gold medal spot, and this is the end of our fourth round. Our plan for the broadcast today is to stay with the triple jump, hopefully through to the final round, but we don't want to miss too much of the men's shot put. We'll bring you either as much of the men's shot put as we can, cut in between, or we'll shift over to the men's shot put maybe by the second or third round. We want to try to catch as many athletes as we can, as we know many of you are watching from home. Men's pole vault will keep going hopefully for quite some time, so we'll likely keep that one camera trained on the pole vault in our top left corner for, for, the, for the foreseeable future here. But we want to see out these final triple jumpers. Our leader, Chloe Knox, on replay. A white flag and a jump of 12.31. She too has been very consistent throughout the day. Max Spicer on the pole vault runway. This is his first attempt, a personal best attempt at 465. Max came to the pole vault as a heptathlete and a decathlete. He is relatively new to the pole vault, starting pole vaulting, nearing the end of his high school career, uh, and then learning how to pole vault, and just in a few short years, a handful of years, competing here on the national stage. He's going to need to get back into that vertical position. We'll see what he thinks about the jump based on his uh, body movements with his coach. They might be looking at a... We'll see what they have to say. We're back to the top of the runway on women's triple jump. Alex Harris with a fault. Over in pole vault, we see that Max is thinking about a nice high plant, a tall takeoff. It looks like they just need to do what they know how to do, and he'll be just fine. We have men's pole vault here at 465. No athletes over 465 yet, although our athlete from Sherbrooke, Edouard Lavoie Bolio has passed this height after a successful clearance at 4.55. We have Erin Blogogy getting ready for her fifth round in triple jump. Erin's best so far today, 11.70, which she achieved in the second round. Beautiful jump from her. It looks like she was right on the board, and it is a white flag. In the men's pole vault, we have an attempt. 
from Evan Mang, who has just come into the competition, missing his first attempt. Evan Mang from Montreal. Here we are with Aram Blogaji. So that was a jump of 11.52. Fairly consistent through the day. So we'll let you know that just off screen, they've started the first round of the shot put. And we will pull up results. Uh, I will do my best to give you shot put results uh, just from, from the uh, tower here. Callista Elliott in the triple. And Michael Ivanov in the pole vault. Successful for Michael Ivanov. And a white flag for Callista Elliott. Here we are first with Callista. Pretty so good. Just looks like she over rotated a little Give bit on some her forward left. rotation. Yeah, last and phase. Michael up and over. It's difficult to in triple jump not to have that forward rotation. It, it's a it's an event with a lot of control. Yeah, it's a lot of control. So when and when you start to have a little bit of forward rotation there, it's really hard to save it and yeah. pull it back. She still achieved an 11.63. Yeah, which is good. Her yeah. best of the night, 11.70. Currently on the runway, we have Chloe Budimore from Windsor. She's getting the crowd going. And on the pole vault runway, we have Nico Martin Huerta. Nico competing here with his brother, Ed. Clearance in the pole vault, a foul in the triple. Nico is up and over at 465. He's the second athlete to make it over this height with lots of room. Hip height a little in front of the bar, hip height a little shallow, but because of the technical proficiency of the entirety of the jump, it didn't matter. Here comes his brother, Ed. These two athletes are some of the nicest athletes you will meet and are just wonderful boys. In women's triple jump, we have Hannah Jodouin from Western. Her best of the night is 11.98, so we'll see if she can get over 12 today. Beautiful jump from her. And it is a white flag. Looks like she got all of that, the board she possibly could there. Fantastic. So that is a jump of 11.98, her best of the night. And we'll see if this is over 12. And it is 12.11, which puts her into third place going into the sixth round. In the pole vault, we have Emmanuel Desolé. And we apologize on our live. Uh, GoBisons.ca is where you can find uh, ongoing results. Unfortunately, right now, I believe we have the HEP men's shot put results up on our live dashboard as, as opposed to our men's shot put, which is, the current, uh, which is the current event happening. So we'll see if we can't get a switch on those live results so that we can bring you live shot put results. Unfortunately, on our website now, we have the heptathlon men's shot put, uh, which was completed yesterday. So if you're looking for live results, we'll, we'll do our best to bring the proper shot put to you as soon as possible. And Olamide, Ololoku. 
She's currently tied for third. Not anymore as Hannah jo Jodwin registered a 12-11. Olamide is going to fight for that podium. Before this round, she was tied for third. Hannah Jodwin bested it with 12-11. Jules unsuccessful in the pole vault. 11-92. She'll have one more shot to catch that podium. So we're currently on our fifth round of triple jump, moving very quickly through the competition. So Mandy Brunette is up on the one right from Windsor. And that is a fault from her. Mm -hmm. Her best so far today has her in second place at 12.56. So a, a big lead right now over the third place finisher at 12.11. Although we still have one round left, the podium could still change. Could still change in the last round. Over in pole vault, we have a second attempt for Bennett Woods at 4.65. Unsuccessful. And getting that bar out of the way as he comes down. A lot of times pole vault injuries happen not in the pole vault itself, but sometimes landing on the bar can be quite painful. Uh, so athletes are always aware of where that bar is as they're coming down because they don't want to land on it on their lower back. So that is Chloe Knox in women's triple jump. They are currently reviewing where she was on the board. Oh, interesting. And it, and is, it a is a red. So all of these athletes over at the triple jump will have one more round. Yeah, the one more round. So they currently just finished the fifth round and now are beginning their sixth. And from the triple jump, we'll move over to the men's shot put. And if you're following along online for live results, we'll do our best to get you that men's shot put. Results currently, unfortunately, we have our live HEP men shot put. That competition completed yesterday on our GoBisons.ca live feed. Uh, but we'll do our best to bring shot put results and shot put coverage very soon. Max Spicer, second attempt. Now, they'll be discussing what needs to be done staying in that vertical position. Max might also be considering a pole with a bit more resistance. Now that depends on what he is comfortable with and what he's comfortable with going through the season. This may already be the top end of what he might use for uh, what we would call his pole stream. This may be the heaviest pole that he has or that he is comfortable with. Uh, so they'll make decisions about whether or not Max is to, to what we would say go up a pole. But no matter what, Max will be looking to get in more of a vertical position. Here comes our triple jump. So this is Alex Harris from Guelph. Looks to either be a foul or very close to the line. Let's see what the read is. It's clean. Yeah, it is a clean jump, which is great. She has only got gotten one in tonight at 11.67. All so. Right. Which is great considering she made the final coming in from 11th place. Well done, Alex. And we have a clearance in the pole vault. That was Evan Mang on his second attempt. His personal best coming into this competition is 480. Alex Harris, a very nice jump. And Evan, beautiful. We have Ed Martin Huerta. These brothers hail from Santiago, Chile. And they've been training with the Spartans for some time now.
unsuccessful on second attempt for Ed. And we'll see. His brother Nico is over at this height. And we'll see what Ed does on his, this may have been his third attempt. And so Ed may be out of the competition now. We'll get that confirmation. We are on the third attempts now. So Ed finishing up the day. He'll now be cheering on his brother Nico. Both of these men are, are five meter jumpers. So we'll hopefully see Nico jump for quite some time today. Stay alive, stay in the competition. Alex Harris, we're just waiting for a mark on Alex. So we're checking a toe for Alex uh, to see if it was in fact um, a clean jump. And it looks as though, unfortunately, ah, no, we're still waiting. She had, had four fouls out of five so far today. Now what we're doing is doing a laser measure. So she looks like she's going to register a mark. 11.43, her best today, 11.67 for an eighth place finished. Coming in ranked 10th, well done. And she will ha register a point for her team yes, in eighth place for the Guelph Griffins. Yeah, and Guelph is certainly in the running for the team championship. Yeah, which is great for them. So here's an unexpected point coming in at 10th. Yeah, that's really good for them. Wonderful. So now we have Eram Blagoji on her sixth attempt. And we'll let the crowd know that following this triple jump, we will be moving over to shot put after this final round Great. of women's triple jump. Great jump from her. She is very powerful on the runway. Yes. Here comes Eram. Beautiful jump. And the pole vault, Emmanuel Desilet. Unsuccessful. So with that, Emmanuel leaves the competition. We have Jules Lebrec on the runway now, third attempt. So we have an 1180 in the triple jump, which moves her into sixth. Which is great. Well done, Eram. Two jumpers, Callista, Elliot, Jules Lebrecht. We have what seems to be a white flag on the triple and a failed attempt on the pole vault. We do now have the men's shot put results going live. And we'll bring those to you shortly. It looks like she got every centimeter of that board. Really good, 11.49 for her final attempt. Her best of the day, 11.70. And Jules finishing out the competition on his third attempt in pole vault. His best today, 4.55. Jules Lebrecht, Laval Rouge et Or. Up next in women's triple jump, we have Chloe Vidamour. She is currently sitting in fifth with a bench jump of the day of at 11.82. And as a white flag. And Bennett Woods shows a good example of stopping before. Now his pull may have jumped out to, to we'll, we'll get a read from the officials. He stopped in time. He's going to still have a shot to try again. So first we have Chloe Vidamour. A very nice attempt. We'll get you a measurement on that shortly. And in the pole vault, this is an interesting take here. So this is an interesting rule in pole vault. If you stop, your runway in time and don't break the plane. So he puts the brakes on, grabs onto the pole to make sure his body uh, stops. He gets another chance. And unfortunately, no clearance, but 1183 
11.83 on the triple jump. So she does improve her overall of the night by one centimeter. She does and moves into fifth place. Now we have Hannah Jodwin. Best today, 12.11. That looks like a beautiful jump from her. We'll see if she can improve her standing in this sixth round. Giving it her all. And to finish the competition, a third attempt for our Guelph athlete. Bennett's best today, 4.55. 12.14 for Hannah Jodwin. So she is, that puts her into third. In third, and she improves upon her best mark of the day by three centimeters. She's being chased now by Olamide Ololoku. Max Spizer. 6 third attempt. Max is a personal best today with 4.55. He's very happy with his performance. Max is our champion for the men's heptathlon. And, uh, Chasing a school record, I believe that might be set by Scott Dressler, his coach. We'll see. I believe Scott Dressler may still have the school record. Consulting there with Scott Dressler and Wayne McMahon here from Manitoba. And they're very proud of, of uh, Max Spizer, who is relatively new to the pole vault. Olamide Ololoku. Let's see if she can crack the podium. She's got to beat 12 14 to make it into the third place position. Her best of the night is 11.98. Coming in, her season's best is 12.17. Hello and welcome back to day three, last and final day of the 2024 U Sports Track and Field Championships here at the James Daly Fieldhouse in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's been an exciting day. I'm joined here by Tegan Turner, who's gonna be talking to us through the four by twos when they get underway very shortly in about 10 minutes. Tegan, you've been around the track the last two days. How are things looking for you? I mean, things have been ecstatic this weekend. Things have been so exciting. Um, the Bisons are clearly building off of the momentum in day one. Um, if you weren't there to join us, we saw, uh, you know, Bison's first one, two in the 60 meter. Uh, and then, you know, I've just really kind of built off even, you know, like weight throw before that. And, and they've just really been powering through the weekend. So, um, you know, very excited as this day is starting to get close to coming to a close. Uh, you know, seeing kind of a few athletes wrapping up here. We still have triple jump to come. We still have on the track here our 4 by 200 and 4 by 400 meter relay finals. And I'm uh, very excited to see what the teams will do here. Absolutely, yeah. It's been an exciting day for all the teams. Uh, we're going to give you a quick recap here of where we stand point-wise after the men's 600 meter concluded or after the 11 events on the men's side. Guelph Griffins are currently ranked number one with 70 points. Behind them, Manitoba Bison 63 points and Laval behind them with 41 points. When we jump over to the women's side, things have shifted up just a little bit in terms of rankings. University of Calgary up 77 points. Western up 74 points in second. Guelph, 72 points in third, so a really tight race on our women's side. Uh, right now, the women's triple jump is underway, so some points will be coming from that uh, for the different teams, so make sure you head on over to the field stream, check it out. We started a little bit before the 600, recapping some of the major accomplishments in the last couple days, and we're gonna keep taking you through that here uh, with the results from the men's high jump uh, that concluded yesterday, so a really, really exciting event uh, yesterday. We're gonna pull up the results for you there. As you can see, Noel Vanderzee, 2.15 uh, from the Calgary Dinos. Uh, Toronto's Aiden Grout, 2.07, tied with uh, Emile Olivier of the of Montreal, pardon me, uh, at 2.07. So a really strong performance uh, from the top three there. Uh, we're also gonna head over to women's long jump and get you the results there. We were talking a lot about uh, Sienna McDonald, who came gold in this event, and she has been all over the track. Every possible event, she won gold in the pentathlon, gold in the women's long jump. Uh, I'm not sure what our events are looking like today, but a very exciting time for her. Uh, very exciting weekend. Uh, Milan Habash of 
Guelph at 5.87 in second, and Fiola Tejifojo, uh, Tejiofo, pardon me, 5.86 in bronze. So really exciting results there. Uh, on the, we're gonna take you really quickly. We got one time for one more. We're gonna look at the women's shot put uh, that happened on the field yesterday afternoon, and some really strong performances out of those athletes. As we pull them up here, Liv Sands of the Western Mustangs are really commanding for performance. 1532, some incredible wow. stuff happening there. Uh, Anna McConnell, 1584 in second of the Bisons, very excited for her. And Caitlin Brooks of the York Lions, 1381. So it was really exciting. And, you know, we can only talk to so many of the athletes. And we were talking with Anna earlier in the week. She was just talking about that field and how excited she was to be you know, competing against such talented women. So congratulations to those three as well. We're going to keep trying to update you on the results of the meet overall as we continue on through the day and keep you posted on team uh, scores. However, we are just getting our block set up on the track for the women's 4x200 meter finals here. Under Ray, Tegan, you were a participant in this fest. You were the lead leg of uh, the Bisons for many years and during their 4x2 uh, races. What is something that fans should be looking for in this race. We talked a little bit about it on Thursday, but let's recap. What should fans be keeping an eye on? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, pretty, you know, exciting race, the 4x200. Uh, a lot of kind of a combination of obviously have the teams will be running their fastest runners today, you know, sometimes in the heats. Depending on how many of the athletes have other events going on, things that they want to be fresh for, they're going to sub in, you know, depending on how much depth they have, they'll sub in some of their runners. Uh, so today is going to be, you know, the fastest of the fast. And uh, it's going to be, again, the combination with uh, the technical part of the baton passing. Um, the incoming runner trying to catch that outgoing runner, both of them trying to be at their max kind of top speeds when each of them pass. And, uh, you know, really exciting to see here. I can already see them lining up on the track. We've got uh, Audrey Leduc of Laval. She's going to be in lane six, I believe. That's our 60-meter gold medalist. In lane five, we've got from Western our silver medalist, uh, Vivian Ogar. And then, again, like these, all these athletes, just incredible, you know, top speed. And we're going to be seeing our fastest ones today. So, you know, keep an eye out for uh, in this first first part of the race. Um, the women will take off uh, out of the blocks and complete one full lap in their lane. They will hand off approximately, you know, there's a bit of a stagger, but approximately at that white finish line, maybe a little bit further for some of those ones that have a bit of a longer, longer route in lane five and six. The second runners will then complete approximately 50 meters and then they're on the back stretch and you'll see them kind of cut down into lane one where they're all kind of, uh, you know, involved a bit, bit technical, that cut in parts to make sure that you're doing your best to kind of tangent in and make sure you're not bumping into anyone, but still running as fast as you can. Something that we saw happen in the six, obviously, and, and usually it's something that you'll see more in the distance events, but obviously in the relays it, it comes into effect too. Yeah. And like you mentioned, we've seen a lot of these women in different events. Uh, 60 meters, some some from the 300 coming to this. Um, so some really exciting stuff happening. And then we have two heats, so everybody's aware. Times can be, or champions can be decided out of both heats. So it is a time final. So uh, placing while getting first is definitely the best step in these first heats. You got to make sure they run in that fast time as well. So both heats are sure to be something really exciting here. And we're about to get underway. Very excited to see this, Connor. Certainly, um, I have seen many times people medal out of this first heat, even though you know the, the second heat is top, technically, you know, usually the top qualifiers from the day before. So um, everybody's going to be running out their their heart out here, and I'm really excited to see them. Absolutely, yeah, and it's exciting to see, as you're saying, you know, we saw the heats, and people who for people who might not be aware, they might think that well, we saw them race on Thursday, isn't that going to kind of shake out the same? But as you were mentioning, a lot of these teams shift up their rosters. They, they won't usually shift up what the order is, but they'll sub different people in and out. Um, so what happened on Thursday is a good indicator, but it is by no means a uh, sure thing of how today's going to go down. So it's going to be a very exciting 4x2. Uh, and again, we've been talking about the relays all weekend, just really bringing these teams together. A lot of team points. Um, can be achieved in both the 4x2 and the 4x4 going on. So it's a real team building uh, or team bonding event. Yeah, you'll see uh, particularly, you know, teams are starting to form around the track at various points to get ready to cheer on 
uh, their athletes at various points in the race. Um, again, it's, it's quite an exciting, again, everybody's involved. Sure, it's not just an individual, but it really is the team. I'm excited to see it. Absolutely. The officials are now closing the track, so we are about to get underway with the 2024 4x200 meter women championship final. The women's 4x200 relay final. Two time finals running. The first of two. In lane three, Ottawa Gigi. In lane four, McGill University. In lane five, the Western Mustangs. There you have it. The starting lineup for this first of two time finals. Absolutely, and, and not to uh, leave out um, and Tabu, who in lane four for McGill was our third, our bronze medalist in the 60. So look out for this first leg. This is going to be fantastic. On your marks. And they're off clean start by all four teams. Like Tegan said, they're gonna be running the entirety in their lanes. It looks like Laval getting out ahead, trying to put some space on the other teams here. Yeah, Miguel doing a good job to catch up to Western here. Keeping in mind, again, we're not gonna really see this dagger until we get to this first handoff here. So well done by Laval, really strong first run. Excellent. Clean nice handoffs. Hand oh, Gigi's a little bit of a problem there. Looked like maybe their first runner, you know, a little bit further in front. Then, you know, Looks it was like ideal for a handoff, but team still in front here. Laval, Laval, McGill, Western, one, two, three. Laval and McGill neck and neck. Western just a half step behind. Really incredible. Make it up that ground fast. Here comes the second exchange. Clean handoffs by all three teams. Absolutely, Laval still in front. Very, very strong. Western looks to be making a bit of a move here on McGill. We'll see what happens around the corner. Can Going. be tough to do. West is Laval really putting on some space between positions two and three. Yeah, McGill kind of holding on to that one. It looks tight, but they're going to keep going. They're in still Another close. Another clean handoff by Laval. McGill Western fighting for second and third in this heat. Yeah, Laval, wow, very strong in front. Laval has a commanding lead heading into the final 100 meters. Western and McGill battling. We'll see what happens here as she comes off the corner for Western. That's Looks Laval. like it'll be very close. Western, McGill, Western. That, I would not want to embarrass myself in trying to predict who that was. That was an incredible finish there. Yeah, what an excellent run by Laval. 136, or I guess like 137.2, probably unofficially there. Excellent. Times. Yeah, strong yeah. run by those girls. Again, you saw, you know, again, exactly what a 4x200 is, some really fast running, but also excellent, excellent technical skill there. Yeah. Um, you can lose a lot of time, as unfortunately we maybe saw in that first part, um, you know. There we go, we're excellent. seeing the recap. So a nice finish by Laval. Yeah, and some really strong, strong handoffs by Laval. Great technical work. And a really close finish by Western oh, and McGill. It looks like Western may have actually outleaned there. So I guess I know we'll wait for the official times, but wow, very exciting. A really strong finish there. And, and as you were saying, yep, that lead. There we go. Laval, 137.26. Western Mustangs, 139.64. McGill, 139.7. A really strong opening heat. Really sending a message. We were talking a lot uh, with Ty uh, Cox Astro yesterday when he's on during the 300s, about the messages you can send early in these heats. Mm -hmm. um, or in the, well, we're now in the finals, but early in the first section that you can send a message to the remainder of the teams. But as you were saying, 100%, we definitely saw Laval opening that lead up with some really just textbook strong, perfect handoffs, great communication between the team, and those it compounds after every handoff. If you just keep doing it right, you're putting a little bit of distance every single time. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said earlier, you know, you can medal out of that first heat. Um, so 
make sure, you know, when the next times come up here, we've got four, you know, again, really strong teams coming onto the track. Um, but keep in mind Laval and Western's time from that first first part because those could end up being some of our teams in the medal spots. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye on that. Absolutely. It's looking like in the second heat, we see the York Lions, Sask Huskies, Guelph Griffins, and the Calgary Dino. So another really strong heat. Um, obviously, I believe Sask is coming into this event ranked number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is the from the season, um, you know, as we've been talking all weekend, what happens during the season, maybe not always uh, an exact representation of what happens in this championship final, but a good indicator. You can see there are qualification times from Thursday's heats. And so we can see University of Guelph, University of Calgary, University of Saskatchewan, one, two, three, uh, with some really close times. York University right behind them as well, really close to that sax mm -hmm. time. So. And, and keeping in mind that those 400, 200, 4 by 200 meter relay uh, times, you know, from the heats were not necessarily the, the strongest teams. Or you know, they, they've subbed in a few kind of players yeah. from other events. So uh, this this order could definitely switch up uh, yeah. in the next little bit. Right. And and pretty excited to see just you know out of lane six. Um, this will be our fourth place person from the 60 meter. Uh, our lady in five here from Guelph won the 600, or so read the 300. Um, and so, you know, I'm just looking, this is going to be really another very exciting heat. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we were talking a lot about the diverse range that you get, you know, different runners coming from. We see a lot of 60 meter runners who are out hard and kind of holding on for that last, you know, 50, 60 meters. Yeah. And we see our 300 meter athletes who maybe it takes them a few extra steps to get going. But once they're there, they're really picking up speed in that last 100 meters. And we're about to introduce the second and final section of the women's 4x200 meter mm -hmm. time finals here. The crowds are packed. The stands are full over here. These relays just really bring out the best energy in the building um, to help encourage these athletes on. Looks like the officials are just doing their final checks, making sure everything's in order so we can have a nice clean, nice clean race. Once again, while we have a second year just before things get underway. Don't forget to check out that field stream. A number of exciting events happening on the infield. Be sure to check it out and we're about to head into women's high jump. We have men's shot put going on and I believe men's pole vault is in action. So yeah, some really tremendous warm, performance. Warm up for men's triple jump so that'll be coming up really shortly yeah. as well. Track is closed. We are underway here. And now two of two in the women's four by 200 final. In lane three, the York Lions. In lane four, the number one seed, Saskatchewan Huskies. In lane five, ranked second going into this competition, Guelph Griffin. And in lane six, the Calgary Dinos. second and final section of the timed finals here for the 4 by 200 meter championship race. On your marks. York in three, Sask in four, Calgary in five, Guelph in five. Start there, everybody's out clean. It's hard well, to tell on these first well, few steps. making up pretty, looked like they were making up the stagger pretty quickly. Again, we'll have to see as they kind of come up to the official kind of first handoff, but wow, she looked quick out of there. Absolutely, it looks like Guelph and Calgary out ahead, McGill, Sass. Looks like Guelph might have gotten the handoff a little bit first. Look yeah, like and they're going to be first in through the cut down. 
Once again, getting a good spot on this line is really important, kind of sets the stage for the next few legs. Yeah. Saskatchewan in fourth here, trying to make a bit of a push here on the back stretch by Paige Willems. Here's week Guelph. Oh dear, and a little bit of obstruction there, maybe just but based on how they were kind of positioned in our third and fourth runners, which will break up a bit of their stride there. Guelph, Calgary, Sask, York. Guelph really trying to extend this lead between first and second here. Putting on a little bit of distance. McGill, or York, pardon me, coming up really strong on Sask here, coming into the final exchange. Textbook handoff from Guelph. Good handoff from Calgary. Sask, York. Once again, these are time finals. Both heats factor in here. Final leg here, just about 100 meters to go. Guelph with a very commanding lead. Sass coming up, it looks like, on the dinos. We'll have to see as they come into that final 50 meter stretch. Looks like it's gonna be Guelph, Calgary, Sass, York. Excellent, dinos very excited, happy to see that. Really, Guelph celebrating. Really exciting stuff there. You know, this is just the 136.3 uh, unofficially, so a really strong time there. Once again, it's like what we saw in the first seat, just some really textbook handoffs between teams which just continue to compound the distance that they were putting on. So a yep. really exciting performance. Congratulations to Guelph, Calgary, Sask, York, really strong across the board. Yeah, I'll be interested to see, you know, as those final times come up, you can see the, the Laval ladies running onto track to kind of take a look, see where things are at. Again, from the first heat, they put on quite a nice run. Um, so I'll be interested to see where in our final times come up, kind of where the medals and final placements shake out. Oh, excellent. We've even got our uh, Dinos mascot on the track. Nice to see. Here we go, official time. So Guelph Griffins first. I think that that means, yeah, Lavelle celebrating. I think that means they'll move into the number two spot for the silver medal. That's exciting. A really exciting performance here. Of course, we're looking at just the results from this second heat. Uh, the official results of how everybody will rank out will factor in online. You can check that out, gobison.ca. Click on that championship banner and that'll take you to the overall points. But yeah, it appears that Laval, out of that first heat, mm -hmm. might have secured a second uh, a second place finish. Once again, it's tough to tell, but a really strong performance from them. And we are about to get underway here with the men's four by two. We're gonna be joined by Ty Cox Yastra, who's with us. Tegan, is there any last things you wanna add uh, at the conclusion here of the four by two? No, you know, uh, thank you so much for having me this weekend. It's been uh, such a pleasure to watch, you know, just every year um, Canadian athletes staying home in a Canadian program. Uh, you know, it's it's phenomenal to watch how much they're progressing every year and how strong they are. And so I'm really excited. Here we go. Sorry to cut you off. Looks no like problem. Guelph in first. And it did look like Laval took that second Excellent. position. University of Calgary in third. Sask in fourth. Really strong performances there. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Tegan. And absolutely, as you were saying, terrific to see Canadian athletes in home. Uh, supporting Canadian programs and really building this this whole conference, this whole co competition up. Now. Absolutely. Looking forward to the men. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. We're going to be joined here by Ty Cox Yastrow of the Bisons, who is going to uh, walk us through some of the men's competitions here. Um, as we're about to get underway, again, a very exciting finish here for the women's 4x2. These... Uh, these performances really factor into that that team mentality, these team scores. Uh, Ty, how are you doing? I am ecstatic. It has been a wonderful day, and you can really feel the energy in the stadium today. How how does the energy today on you know the last day of the championships feel different than maybe yesterday, even yesterday and, and, and the other day? I feel honestly, it feels like a whole new track meet. It, it, the scores, you can finally figure out who's who's in a, what place, who's really in a chance to win it. If there's going to be any comeback stories, there's going to be any fairy tale endings, all of that stuff happens today. Absolutely. You were just here watching the women's 4x2. What stood out to you in that last race? Um, honestly, the grip from uh, the Guelph Griffins women's team. They were just fantastic, and they had a very commanding lead from, uh, from leg one all the way through to leg four, and I thought that was very, very, very good to watch from them. Excellent. And now we're looking ahead here, men's 4x200 meter. Ty, what are you most excited about seeing in this race? Am I allowed to be a little bit biased? A little bit, yeah, let's let's factor in. I wonder what you're gonna say. <laughs> I am very excited to see what the Bisons can do today. Yep. But on an overall on an overall spectrum, um, we are in a very, 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 very close battle. Um, all these teams have run very fast this year and we are in for an absolute show. Absolutely. Expect a little bit of mayhem as we have a fifth a fifth seed in this first heat 
and that'll that'll definitely mix uh, shake things up a little bit. And all these times are very close, as you can see on your screen here. Yeah, absolutely. And what you're looking at here, these are the qualification times from Thursday's performances in the heats. Uh, we're going to be seeing uh, positions eight, uh, eight through five, I believe, uh, in this first heat. You're going to see them up right away. Ty, we were talking to Tegan briefly about how you know some viewers might see what happened in the heats on Thursday and think, well, that we're running it again isn't going to be pretty much the same, but it's not. This no. is a totally different race. Different athletes might be competing. What are you excited to see from these teams now? Uh, the best that they can offer. You know, for lots of these athletes, this could be their last race of the day. This could be the last race of their career. So expect to see some emotions expect to see some 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 effort expect to see some of the fastest times these athletes will ever see in their lives yeah absolutely and we're just about to get underway the officials are locking track up the, the track. men's four by 200 relay final in the first section in lane two the regina cougars in lane three the guelph griffins In lane four, the Calgary Dinos. In lane five, the Toronto Varsity Blues. And in lane six, the Manitoba Bison. Jordan Sufi giving a little wave to the home crowd there. Coming off of his 60 meter goal yesterday, or Thursday. Expect him to get out like lightning. You can also see gold medalist Emma Pavakis in lane five and bronze medalist Devin Zukorowski in lane four. You know, a really stacked key. We've seen these athletes pop up a number of times over the weekend. And, you know, oh, the, I'm sorry, also silver medalist, I believe. Oh no, that was Brandon, my fault. Some really exciting performances from these guys all weekend long. And it's been an exceptional time, and this is really the culminating event for a lot of them. On your marks. Section one of the time finals, men's 4 by 200 meter relay underway here. Clean start from all five competitors here. Jordan roaring down the back straight there. Absolutely right behind him. Looks like the Varsity Blues are trying to stay in contact as they come into this first exchange. Marcus Penaloza also running very well out in lane three. And it looks like it is going to be Jordan Sufi first of the exchange with Toronto. A little bit of a slipped handoff there from the Bisons. Toronto coming out on top as they hit the break line. And it looks like Toronto, Guelph, Calgary, Regina, and Manitoba. Looks like Guelph is coming up, making a move past Toronto. A little mess the all the way from everyone. Looks like there's Guelph on a little bit of the way there. Yeah, in the post exchange kind of area, it can be a little chaotic. Toronto still with the lead. Guelph close behind them in second, Calgary in third. Look to see a tight finish here from all of these athletes. Guelph looks like they're slightly taking a lead. This is going to be a battle. Toronto trying to hold them off in the back stretch. It's going to be a real fight going into the last turn here. Yes, it will be. Guelph, Toronto, Calgary. All right, here comes Toronto near the end. He's staying with Calgary. It's going to be close, but it's Guelph. And it looks like Calgary, Toronto, Manitoba, and Regina. Holy, so it's a really strong performance from the Dinos coming up in that second place. But a unofficially, it, yeah, it is phenomenal. <laughs> Go ahead, unofficially. 128.10, which is a very, very, very fast time, ladies and gentlemen. A really exceptional performance there. And Guelph, Guelph and Toronto battled that entire way. 
Uh, some really, really textbook exchanges happening and uh, just a really phenomenal last 150 meter push from the Guelph athlete to kind of take the control of the race at the end there. What stood out to you most in that, that section? How messy things got. Yeah, we absolutely saw there was a, a bit of an unfortunate exchange early on on the Bison side and it's always tough to see that. And the, uh, the post handoff area can be a little challenging. You have one athlete who is trying to avoid getting in the way as two athletes at a very high speed might also be coming from behind them. Having five, having five teams in one run, one relay race can be very messy. Usually, traditionally, it's usually four. Uh, today it was five, and you can really see how hectic things can get yeah. because of that. And it can really change change the pacing of a race. I've seen teams who are ranked last win races because of that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it, one team does make a difference in these kind of things. So a really exciting first heat to kind of set the tone for these uh, four by twos. And we see the second heat taking the track now. We're going to see Windsor, Alberta, Western, and Montreal competing here today. Look to watch Alberto run a fantastic race as they have been first in the Here we're looking at the times from the first heat. The men, so it looks like Guelph 128, University of Toronto 128. Pardon me, University of Calgary 128, Toronto 128 as well, followed right behind by Manitoba and then Regina. So it looked like Manitoba had a fight in the back and managed to uh, just get past Regina there, so some really uh, tough grit there. Some really strong performances. Top to bottom, all five teams, that was a phenomenal race to watch. That was absolutely fantastic. My heart is absolutely racing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's tough sometimes to keep voices level in these really exciting relays. Especially when you might, may or may not have a, have, a, have a little bit of a bias going. Yeah, absolutely. But I, as a fan of the sport in general, I love watching these races. The 4x2, relays in general, 4x8, yep. 4x2, 4x4. When you get to the outdoors, it's 4x1, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And you're seeing right now, it, it, uh, you can get a little glimpse on the side there, but the, the track is packed all the way through. Teams are up against the, the, the uh, banks of the track. The infield is full, the stands are packed, and these, these relays really, as we've been saying all morning or afternoon, just bring out an electric energy for these athletes to feed off of. I would not be shocked if uh, we were being overshadowed by just the screams of the crowd as we're commentating. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. And if you're hearing a little bit of cheering coming from the background, that's the men's pole vault, which is in action. Make sure you head on over to the stream, get some insight in there, because fortunately both Ty and myself not pole vaulters, so we can't tell you too much about what's going on over there. All Other I can say is it looks very cool. It looks very cool, and it looks very high, so you might want to head over there, check that out. We're yeah. sitting up here, Section 2 men's 200-meter final, 4 by 200 meter final, pardon me. What are you most looking forward to watching this race? I, you know, as a distance runner, never having to really focus too much on the handoffs, the exchange between teams and how much that can impact. And you, we saw it in the, the women's runs. Laval just had some really textbook exchanges that just one hand into the other just started compounding that, that lead that they were, they were growing. So I'm really excited to see these teams and how much work goes into that and seeing that pay off here in the championships. Yeah, you are absolutely correct. It's like I said in day one, it's not about how fast you are, it's about how fast that baton goes. Yeah, absolutely. Pon Baton's got to cross the line first. Four by 200 relay. In lane three, the Windsor Lancers. In lane four, the number one seed, Alberta Golden Bears. In lane five, ranked second, the Western Mustangs. And on numero six, Montreal Caliban. Western coming into this, ranked number one out of the heats. That's lane five. Cannot count out Windsor, who had a fantastic win in, in the heats day one as well. Absolutely, anything can happen here in the finals.
clean start. They're off. Evan Asapa from Alberta in lane four making up ground on Western. We'll see them coming into this first exchange here. Pretty even from everybody so far. Really good handoff there. Western kind of coming out on top as they hit this break line. Montreal making a line into second, kind of bumping with Alberta a little bit. These, these passes can get very, very, very messy. As we look to watch these exchanges here. We have Western one, Alberta two, Windsor three. Montreal four. Looked like there might have been a little bit of chaos in that post uh, post handoff section. Yes, there was. Montreal. It was going to be a very, very, very close finish. Team is spreading out here, coming into the final exchange. Western out ahead. Alberta in second, Windsor third. But you cannot count any of these teams out yet. We are looking at a battle here for this for this first place finish. Coming in, Western Alberta. Here comes Windsor, Windsor as well. Making up the home stretch. Looks like Western's going to hold on. Windsor in second, Alberta in third, Montreal four out of that heat. Unofficially 127 1 2. Really exciting finishing heat there. It's a very, very, very fast time. Once again, time the timed finals, teams out of either heat can win. Some really exciting stuff happening there. Western clearly celebrating what was a really, really fantastic run. Yes. 127-11 unofficially there on the board for Western. As you can see, the emotions are just wild from this Western team and from every other team who competed today. Like I had said, the emotions will always ride high on this last day, and that's what makes this last day so different from the first one. Yeah, absolutely. All the cards are on the table here. These are where the team points are also decided. Equally as important here. Once again, uh, official results can be found. Go Bisons.ca. Checking that um, championship banner. That'll let you know what's happening. Really exciting performances. Ty, what, what was the highlight of that second heat for you? the determination from Western, no matter how messy things got, they found a way to get there and they got there and they did it very, very well with, might I add, the absence of Aaron Thompson, their 360 meter specialist. Yeah, absolutely. So a really commanding performance from them, some exciting stuff on the track. You can see them waiting to see these results pop up. As you, can, as you need to remember, medals can come from both heats, first and second. Yeah. Absolutely, I believe we saw Laval out of the first heat uh, score that second place. So we're seeing. I believe that's 127.11 for Western, 127.37 for Alberta, and 128.17 for Montreal. Yeah. And I am not totally sure what Guelph ran in their race, so I have no idea. Have been. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see where these results come in. Um, some Windsor athletes waiting there. But Ty, we're going to let you go as we start hitting some distance events. What are you most looking forward to? we got only a couple more things left on the track. Obviously yourself being a big 4x4 four four, uh, part of the Bisons squad. I imagine you're pretty excited for that second relay. You know what? I am pumped up to watch that 4x4. Four four. Um, the energy for that 4x4, four four, and you'll ask any athlete, jumper, thrower, whatever athlete you are, the energy at the 4x4, four four, it is always the last race of the meet. It is of any meet, Olympics, Junior Olympics, World Championships, the 4x4's four four energy is absolutely electric. And I would not be shocked if you are overshadowed during that, if we weren't already during this. That is, that is the goal, yeah. Hopefully the crowd is dr uh, drowning me out so you don't have to listen to me for too much longer today. Ty's going to be in the crowd cheering on the Bisons. Uh, Ty, thanks for joining us this weekend. This has been terrific. Do you have any last things you want to add uh, before you get off here? I just want to wish a congratulations to all the athletes that competed this weekend. Um, I've seen some incredible stuff, and I have really enjoyed being up here today. And I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be here today as well. This has been terrific. Thanks for joining us, Ty. We're going to hear from you. Uh, well, we won't hear from you the rest of the day, but we'll see you in the crowd when you're cheering. I'll be the hobbling Bison. around somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Take care, Ty. All thanks right. for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye.
We got a few more events coming up later today, short or very soon. Uh, we're heading right into the men's and women's 1500 meters, which are about to get underway. And we're going to bring in Simone Barube very shortly, who's going to talk to us a little bit about those 1500 meters and, and what's going into that. Uh, there's still a crowd kind of gathered. Um, you see a time is not being displayed on the board uh, for Windsor. We're not sure what that means. Um, be sure to just keep an eye on uh, the official results as they come up. Sometimes there can be some technical issues or, or what uh, what might be happening. I won't, I won't try to speculate. Uh, the Western team there clearly celebrating their exciting finish. On the other half of the track, on the back half, uh, the 1,500 meter women are just getting lined up there and we're about to get underway. And we're joined by Simone Barube again, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about the 15. Simone, you yourself, 1500 meter athlete, we're watching these women, what's something that you're really excited for in the next race? Uh, just looking at the entry list here, uh, I've seen that there's already seven uh, women here that hit U Sports standard. So this is gonna be a good one here. This is gonna be pretty fast. Um, let me be the one to tell you here that the U Sports standard is not easy to hit. No, absolutely not. Uh, Coming in rank 12 from Laval Rouge or Camille Boudreau. Coming in ranked 11th, she was second at the Can West Championship, sixth in the 3,000 meters yesterday. University of Victoria Elise Coates. Coming in ranked 10th from Calgary, she was second in the 3K yesterday. Chloe Turner. Come in, coming in ranked ninth from McMaster, Victoria Lamb. Coming in ranked eighth from Western, she was bronze medalist in cross country at OUAs, Chloe Coots. Coming in ranked seventh, she was seventh in this event last year from Waterloo, Hillary Clark. Coming in ranked sixth, from Saskatchewan, she was fifth at the U Sports XC Championships in the fall, Caitlin Harrison. Ranked fifth from Laval, she was the 3K winner yesterday, Catherine Beauchemin. Please clear the track. We have an event starting shortly. Please off the track. Coming in ranked fourth, the second team all Canadian over cross country he was fourth here last year from Alberta, Olivia Cooper. Ranked third, bronze medalist in the 1,000 meter yesterday from Guelph, Julia Agostinelli. Ranked second, a cross country all Canadian was second, third in the 3,000 meter yesterday from Western, Sophie Coots, and coming in ranked first. The winner of this event last year from Guelph, Cameron Ormond. There you have it, and you're looking at the top performances of the year there on your screen. Uh, like many of the distance events, is a double waterfall start, so we're gonna see a breakdown line um, just after the first turn uh, on the track. Uh, as Simone was saying, yes, we have a number of women who've achieved that youth sports standard, so very exciting times uh, this year. Simone, the 15 can uh, occasionally be a bit of a tactical race. Are you expecting that here, or do you think it's going to be uh, a straight run, straight race? I think it's going to be an honest pace. Uh, there, the 15 has changed a little bit. The tactic isn't really to go slow and then sprint. I think it's going to be an honest pace right off the gun. Excellent. Here we go, women's. Women's 1500 meter final underway here. A little bit of jostling right off the line there. Getting a good spot here, coming off the break line is always important. That was like Kenny Boutreau at the front. We have Waterloo athlete taking the early lead here. Well, right behind, and then two Laval athletes tucked right in there as well. So our last year's winner, Cameron Ormond, looks to be putting herself in a good spot here in second place. Uh, look out for her. On paper, she's the clear favorite for this race. Yeah, absolutely. The 15 long race. We're doing seven and a half laps here. So they started on the opposite end of the track. They're going to be finishing coming through the, the home line, obviously. Finish line. So far, this looks to be like a decent pace. Everybody's still bunched up, though. Yeah, we're going to start seeing this pack kind of thin out. 
That's Ormond taking the lead. Followed by... That's like Boschme from Laval. Yeah. Look at Cooper there sitting in about fifth place. And I believe that is Waterloo's Hillary Clark right tucked into that top three. The field isn't really stringing out that much, so this indicates like it could be a little bit more tactical than I imagined. Nobody's really dropping off the pace right away. It's no. good to see that everybody's still in contact, ready to race. Still running a solid pace, still running at speed. It's not a, it's not anything crazy, but yeah, absolutely. When these athletes are in contact, it's really anybody's race. Uh, anybody has the space to make a move here. So we're kind of starting to see our one, two, three sort of settle in. Looks like our favorite uh, Ormond in the front right now, dictating the pace. Well, athlete Calgary making a move to make sure she stays in connection with that kind of front pack that sort of start, not front pack, but leaders. A lot of familiar faces on the track here. A lot of these women probably ran the 3K yesterday and the 4x8, so yeah. that might play into this race as well. The 1500 is a long race. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to start seeing things start to shift up probably in that last 400 meters. Again, we're looking at Bond. I believe that's her teammate from Guelph, Agostinelli, Clark, Turner from Calgary. Once again, there's not much separation here between anybody. We're starting to see a bit of a train develop in the back, back uh, pack, but again, not, not much of a change here. Everybody's still in contact. Might be a little bit of a gap opening up after about seventh or eighth place here. Yeah. We'll see if they start picking up the pace a little bit. But this looks to be like a good race so far. No, I just want to point out we have the Dalhousie athlete who just a couple laps ago was tucked in at the very back of this long train and has really tried to fight up her way to make contact here. Yeah, she's doing a good job. She just needs to go with this pack here. You can see a clear separation now. Our top six runners maybe separating a little bit from the rest of the field. Actually, that's Ormond from Guelph. Still in the lead, but that looks like... That's Olivia Cooper in second place right now. Yeah, Olivia move. Cooper from Alberta. Agostinelli from Guelph is still hanging in there. Bell There's lap. the bell lap. Cooper, or pardon me, Ormond really putting on the... The Jets here in the last 200 meters trying and to open up a gap. And you can see why she was the early uh, favorite. The winner last year uh, on paper a lot faster than a lot of these women here, but she's doing a good job at uh, gapping the field right now. Olivia Cooper though. Really coming up fast, coming off this bend, coming in the last 50 meters right there. It appears to be Armand through the line first. Cooper, Cooper in second, Agostinelli third. And it looks like Dalhousie may have just snuck into fourth place there, right ahead of Waterloo's athlete. A really strong performance by, by all the athletes here, of course. Uh, a, a really strong one, two, three. Uh, and again, like you said, that Dal athlete was a little farther back and really fought her way up, so a really strong performance there as well to get into that top five. You see the athletes there celebrating. That is a very hard fought race. Uh, the 1500, not, no event is easy. The 1500 meter at the end of a long weekend can be difficult for these athletes. Yeah, exactly. I'm, as I said, a lot of these women already ran races, so they must be relieved to be done right now. Yeah, absolutely. Simone, what stood out to you the most uh, in that race? What was something that you found really interesting or exciting? Well, the favorite Ormond really just stuck, stuck herself at the front of the pack and then struck when necessary. Yeah. So she really put herself in a good spot to just be able to kind of race the way she wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it was a really strong performance. She didn't have to, you know, a tricky part with the 15 is when you kind of get uh, grouped up into that middle pack, you know, and you're still in contact, but you are expending a lot more energy trying to hold your own zone uh, with athletes on either side of you. So being able to get out in front and kind of see the track ahead of you and have your open space is, is a huge benefit. So a really small, strong tactical performance uh, from Ormond to, to put herself in the right position there. 
to the athletes there just celebrating after <laughs> what has been for a lot of them a very grueling weekend yes uh, a lot of uh, a lot of races you know it, it's rare you might see a 1500 meter and a 4x4 on occasion I, I probably wouldn't imagine many of these women are probably doubling up there so this is likely the end of their weekend so congratulations to them some really the whole the whole final a, a really strong performance We're gonna start moving our way. We can see the gentlemen on the back line, or in the back half of the track. They're gonna do their final strides. Simone, uh, you've been talking a little bit about the uh, athletes we have doing the mile and, and what that signifies. Can you talk to people a little bit about those athletes? So our uh, top men contenders, definitely uh, Mathieu Baudet from McGill, Max Davies from Guelph, John Simone de Gagne, Jude Wheeler D, Jonathan Pobdielski. Those are all guys that have, the top three have definitely already run under four minutes in the mile. That is a significant barrier to run under for the, for the men's uh, mile. So these guys, as you can see on our screen right now, 341, uh, that's really fast. That is that is sub four miling, so yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and uh, obviously the mile, uh, it's just a little over 1600 meters, so it's not one of the indoor Canadian uh, uh, distances, but when an athlete does run it, we can convert that time and, and kind of, you know, through their really strict scientific process, figure out what they would run through that 1,500 meters. Uh, yeah, absolutely, a really exciting field here. You're getting to look at the top 10 performances of the year. Uh, most of these guys are going to be uh, in this final here as well. Some really exciting stuff happening. We obviously saw a lot of these gentlemen uh, wrap things up yesterday during the uh, Four by 800, obviously Max Davies and the Guelph Griffins taking home that gold medal in a really strong uh, performance there. Um, in, the, in the 1K and in the 4 by 8 In the 1K as well, yeah. So <laughs> when we're talking about long weekends, a lot of these guys yeah. have uh, been on the track the whole time. We're looking at the 1,000 final there. Uh, Jonathan Popoleski, uh, you also saw on that roster, also finished out the... Uh, 4x800 meter yesterday for Regina in a really strong performance. Jared House as well, bronze medal in the 1,000. So. Yeah, so those are the same three guys on your screen that medaled in the 4x8 as their anchor. Yeah. Uh, the anchor for their teams. And uh, looking at the list really quickly, I believe everybody in this 1,500 meter field has already ran at least one race this weekend. So nobody's on fresh legs. No. So this could be anybody's race. Absolutely. And you, you were talking a little bit about it earlier in the day, but that running a couple of races beforehand isn't necessarily a detractor. Obviously, you're probably a little bit more tired, but maybe you've busted the rust off a little bit. You're feeling a little bit uh, into rhythm, perhaps. Here we're getting a look at the women's 1500 meter final times. We're gonna go right back to the top. Ormond, 423. Cooper, 424. Agostinelli, 424. Yeah. Really strong run there. So Simone, you've been in these 1500s many times. What What's it like in that first, let's say, 150 meters off the line? Um, it, it's basically just dictating your spot on the, on the track. Uh, you're trying to fight for a position. And uh, yeah, you just really want to get out, um, find your spot in that race, kind of set an early pace, uh, and try and hold on for that. So again, as I mentioned before, I don't think these top seeds are going to be holding back anything. No. I think it's in their best interest to try and run the legs out of the rest of the field. Yeah. You know, there's some good guys here that can, if it's a slow pace, they're going to catch you. So, yeah. and in their best interest to go fast. Yeah. Yeah. There was a long period, not long period of time, but there were a lot of races back in the day where you would see a 15 go out in a very uh, achievable pace for anybody on that field, and ultimately it came to whoever could kick the last 250, yep. the fastest, and uh, that has not been the stuff we've been seeing over the last couple of years, and, and it's really exciting to see those honest pace just laid down, um, challenging each other, really, you know, achieving faster and faster times when the competition grows like that. Yeah. 1,500 meters, 13 competitors in this event. Coming in ranked 15th from the University of New Brunswick, the AUS champion, he was fifth Last year, Mitchell Keane coming in ranked 12th. Second at Can West from the University of Regina, Braden Mytofer. Coming in ranked 11th 
the RSEC bronze medalist, first time finalist at U Sports from Université Laval, Elliot Eru. Coming in ranked 10th from Guelph, he was the bronze medalist in the 1000 meters in 2022, Rohan Nobating. Coming in ranked 9th, <laughs> two finishes in the top 10 at U Sports in this event. He was fourth at Can West from the Alberta Golden Bears, Ron McLean. Come in ranked eighth, fifth at RSEC. He was sixth in cross country in the fall, Thomas Laviolette. Coming in ranked seventh, bronze medalist in the 1,000 meters yesterday from University of New Brunswick, Jared Howes. Coming in ranked sixth, bronze medalist in the 3,000 meters yesterday from the University of Guelph, Nick Bannon. Coming in ranked fifth, the Can West champion, silver medalist in the K yesterday from University of Regina, Jonathan Podbielski. Coming in ranked fourth, the 1K champion from last year from Queens, Jude Wheeler D. Coming in ranked third, the 3,000 meter champion yesterday. He won this event in 2022 from Université Laval, Jean-Simon Degagne. Coming in ranked second from the University of Guelph. He won the 1,000 meters yesterday. He won this event last year from the University of Guelph, Max Davies. And coming in rank with the top ranked time, silver medalist at the RSEC Championships, silver medalist in the 3,000 meters yesterday from McGill University, Matt Baudet. There you have it. That is your starting lineup for the men's 1500 meter championship race here. So again, your higher seeded times are going to be on that upper bank, that upper waterfall. On your marks. Really quick gun there. Everybody's off. This is the crucial part of the race here. They're just going to want to try and cut in. And, and not have any contact on anybody else. A lot of times we'll see a fall here, so hopefully everybody stays on their feet. So we're starting to settle in. Yeah, already the field is stringing out. This looks to be like a decently honest pace. Looks like no butting, Davies and Pobieski out in front, one, two, three. Yeah, I see right away, just thinking I see two Guelph athletes at the front. Max Davies, your favorite. I I think No Botsing is doing a little bit of a pace job for him, helping him out, his teammate. That's In fourth good. place there, we got uh, Jean-Simon Degagnier. He is not to be uh, disc discarded from this race at all. Neither is Metzier or Baudet in third place. Absolutely not. Really, we're starting to see this kind of train Start to even out as, as athletes kind of take their place on the inside of that track. Trying to avoid running any further than they have to so they don't want to be out in lane two. No but saying Davies, one, two from 12. Two really strong athletes here. All these guys looking really good right now. Look, looking really comfortable at this pace. And like I said, this is looking to be like an honest pace. Uh, I don't think those Guelph guys at the front or the Quebec guys want to go slow. No, don't want to leave this up to anybody, any chance, especially with so many team points riding here. Davies. Davies making a push for the front. Baudet falling right behind. Then you see a response from John Simone de Gagne and Jude Wheeler D. Pobielski, so yeah. Back a little bit. Pobielski, yep, yeah, making up some ground. Once again, every single guy is neck and neck with each other. They're on e right behind, remaining in contact, ever important here. It's only gonna get faster from here, Connor. Yeah. Starting to end into the second half here. Davey seems to be very comfortable up front. The top six looks like they're breaking away a tiny bit. Might be a little bit of a gap forming there in seventh place. See Jared Howe is making a push to try and close that gap. You do not want to get disconnected from that pack. No, absolutely not. Good job from him to try and move with that pack. Here we go. Pace is really starting to increase here. 
Boda finishing in second place yesterday in the 3,000 meter, and you got your gold medalist from the 3,000 sitting in third place. It is anybody's race in that top pack, all remaining in contact, all responding to each other, nobody backing down from this pace. Coming into the bell lap here, this is going to be a really, really fast lap. You can see Jonathan Pobielski on the outside making a huge push. Here's the bell. We'll see what can happen. Max Davies just looks way too good right now. Really He's opening it up. Degonye and Pobielski fighting for that second place position. It looks like Davies is running away with this, coming into the home stretch. Just really turned on the Jets in this last lap. Here he comes. And that's another win for Max Davies from Guelph. Jean-Simon Degonier from Laval in second. Pavielski with another great third place finish. A really, really strong run here from the whole field remaining in contact there. Uh, each athlete really responding as Max Davies kind of shifted that pace in the second half. Uh, a really strong finish, but at the end of the day, they hit that 200 meters and Davies just took off. Yeah, he's, he's really good. He had a very good finish there. And you can see him starting to take the lead with about 800 to go, and he just never looked back. No, absolutely. That felt like Mac da Max Davies' race, and we were, we were just watching it. <laughs> yeah, a really strong performance there. Congratulations to all the guys on the field. Some tremendous stuff. Simone, what really did you enjoy watching about that performance? You know, there's the way that these all these guys are able to run this pace, like it's easy. Like yeah. It's just any other day, you know? like. This is not anything that's easy at all. Like, this is very fast. Yeah, incredible. 344 unofficially is a stellar performance. And, and yeah, absolutely. Like you're saying, it, it looked like at any point in time that could have been anybody's race in that second half as people start to approach uh, remaining in contact. So it just is a testament to the depth of the, uh, the U Sports field here. Just seeing early results. Looks like Jude Wheeler D finishing in fourth place. And uh, Metzger Baudet finishing in fifth for Miguel. We'll get those uh, times for you on the screen. Looks like it's another championship record or U Sports record for Max Davies. He's having himself a weekend here. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like the current U Sports championship record 346 uh, 85s, what we have listed in 1990 by Alan Clausen. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, it's pretty safe to say that Max Davies broke it with a 344, kind of punching right through that. Once again, that is unofficial. We do not have official results up. Uh, but once we do, uh, we'll be sure to let you know. Or go check out online, gobison.ca. You can find all the information there. It looks like we may have had a couple of guys under that old U Sports record. Once again, just a testament to the depth of the field here and of the events. Shout out to the uh, James Daly Fieldhouse for being a place for U Sports records. Yeah. Winnipeg, Manitoba is a place to run fast. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the track got resurfaced a number of years ago, and it is just continuously proven to be one of the faster tracks in, in Western Canada. So some exciting stuff happening here this weekend. We're not done yet, though. We have a lot more to talk about uh, coming up as things start to wrap up here. 345 is going to be the 4 by 400 meter relays and that is going to be the capstone race uh, of the weekend here on the track some really exciting performances coming out of there Simone you were also part of the 4x4 team a number of years uh, what's something sanity what's something exciting about that race that you just love you know it kind of relates to all groups of people right all groups of runners uh, you get the sprinters and you get the distance athletes that just love watching this race yeah the 4x4 is just an amazing relay and run in Canada and the US, so everybody knows it, and it's, it's just awesome to, rate, or awesome to watch. Absolutely, and the crowd is gonna be going electric as that will likely be the final event of the night. Obviously, there might still be a few field events going on, which will kind of cap off, but it'll be the last track event, which always brings a certain level of energy into the building. So we're gonna take a short break. We're gonna come back with some coverage of the four by 400 meters. We will see you then shortly. Be sure to check out full results online, gobyzes.ca. And she's successful. She took that bar with ease. She is successful. She came a long way from Prince Edward Island, and she's ready for this. 
clean competition so far. Let's see if she can keep it going with the next heights. Yes, and her university is incredibly proud of her. I, I followed their social media over the last uh -huh. little while, and they are really highlighting uh, Peter Side's appearance here, and they're just so very proud of her. I think she was named Athlete of the Week, and um, a really strong showing from University of Prince Edward Island. Yeah. And we're now into round two of the men's triple jump. Lyndon Eels McCurdy. A red flag. On the first round, Lyndon measured a 1394. So has had a has had a jump count. Currently sitting in seventh place. Now for those watching at home, it is a six round event. However, only the top eight qualify for the final three jumps, the final, the finals. Yes, and you wanna make sure that you're getting one jump into that final so you can get the extra three jumps. So, so far, Lyndon is sitting in seventh. Uh, James Crawford is next on the runway and he is, has not registered a mark yet. He has a, a foul on his first round, so we'll see if he can't break into that top eight here in round two. In the high jump, we just saw Emma Dale unsuccessful over 166. She'll have another shot. And on the high jump, we now have Lara Denvo. She just looks happy to be here. <laughs> I think you're happy for her to be here, too. I'm very happy. It's nice to have her back after you know, going away to Oregon State for a year and then also being injured for Look another at that. two. And she's up. Beautiful, beautiful clearance, Lara. So Lara Denbo, that's wonderful. And she's getting a consult with her coach there. And on the triple jump. James Crawford, another foul. Kiana Cadman over in high jump. Successfully over 166. Congratulations, Kiana. Look at this. Beautiful Just jump. Just so easy. <laughs> yes. And we'll see our triple. Now I feel as though if he gets the board, he's going to be flying today. So we'll see if he can make that count next time. So exactly. I'm sure that put when, him in that top eight position. So when we see those foul jumps, we still like to see the jump itself, because even though it's a foul, we can get an idea of how the athlete's going to go through exactly, the day. Exactly, yep. And that looked pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Now, James Crawford comes in with a 1457 personal best, season best. Registered two fouls so far, but we really do hope he can sneak one in on the third. Uh, next, we've got Armin Shazaday from the Mustangs. Armand's first round was 14.31. Missing some components. He'll regroup and come back. He has registered a mark. He's currently sitting in fourth with a 14.31. So just there in the, it looks as though they're in the, in the second phase of the triple, just coming a little bit off center and uh, not completing his jump. Over in high jump, we have Taylor Schultz on her second attempt at 166. Taylor's personal best, 171. And Taylor will make some adjustments. This is where that patience comes into play. Not finishing the jump too early. Letting that knee drive fly. In the men's triple jump, Armand was not able to increase his mark from the first round, but he's still sitting at a 1431. We now have Toby Oshikoya on the runway from Dalhousie. 1414 first round. And on the high jump, Holly Harrison, second attempt. Similar, Holly will uh, be looking to complete that jump, get that knee drive up and high. 
not being in too much of a rush to complete. And we have Toby on a replay. And Toby moves into the fourth place spot with 14.53. A very good jump from Holly. Just looking like she dropped her hips a few seconds too early, Just but a the height bit. is there. Yep. Owen McNeil next on the triple jump runway. And Chloe Zaraska. Currently sitting in fifth on the high jump. Let's see how these athletes do. Chloe is over. Owen with an excellent jump, but a foul. His best so far today, 14.25. Oh, that was a successful jump, I apologize. These replays are so nice. Yeah. I love it. We're watching two screens here at once as we announce. And the replays are such a nice feature to get those details of these performances. Ooh, very close for Callista Blair from the Griffins. And down in the bottom screen, we have Patrick Hanna from Sherbrooke. His first round performance was 1345. He comes into the competition with a personal best of 1495, so he has room to move. Next up in high jump is Emma Dale, last year's U Sports bronze medalist in the high jump. Beautiful jump, Emma. So the bar from here will go from 166 to 169. We do still have a few athletes uh, working on this 166 height. And in the men's triple jump, Arwin Mathavathanen. His first round, 1469. He's currently sitting in third. Coming in with a fifth place ranking. Just a little off on this second phase. And ends up running through. Here's Robin Selkirk in the high jump. That was a second attempt for Robin Selkirk. She'll still have another shot. Tegra Janking on the runway. All right, for Arwin, he registers an 1166. It was a run through, so not a surprise there. Taylor Schultz on the high jump runway. Going into the third round now. She also did the pentathlon? Not this year. She previously was a pentathlete, but decided that she wanted to stick to her jumping events this year. Right, so she has competed already this weekend. She was in the long jump on Friday. Yes. Unsuccessful on her third attempt, her best attempt so far, 163. So she'll be finishing the competition with a great jump of 163. Meanwhile, Tiger Janking receives a foul. He's going to be digging deep here. That's the second foul for Tegra. And so he's a very accomplished jumper. Tegra Janking comes in ranked fourth with a 1525. So he'll likely be playing it safe for the third round mm -hmm. just to get that top eight. Lachlan. Lachlan Irish comes in third from Lethbridge Pronghorns, a seed of 15.32. He's preparing for his jump. Holly Harrison just finished up her high jump. 
She was unsuccessful on her third attempt. Congratulations, Holly, on a, on a really successful weekend. 163. And competed as well in the pentathlon. Lachlan Irish over in the triple jump. Calista Blair in the high. And Lachlan struggling there with his second phase as well will be much lower on the mark. Uh, an incomplete jump there for Lachlan. They'll measure it nonetheless, uh, but won't be as long as his 1491 from the first round. Our leader so far, 1560, Dax Turner. Yep. He's having fun. He always has fun. He does. <laughs> and, and we have a clear from energy. Callista Blair. It really is. Now we hope he just stays in the zone, nice and positive. A good amount of energy. A good amount of energy. It's hard not to cheer from up here, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes I forget <laughs> I'm wearing this uh, mic. And <laughs> so just for sort of the uh, a description of, the, of what we're seeing here from our, our booth, Dax is essentially starting his runway directly under the tower from where we are. So it's very hard not to say, yep. go buddy. <laughs> He's an excellent athlete and also just a good friend to all of the Bisons. He's a good kid. Sure Creative is. and funny and great kid. Smart. Is he in his third year now? I believe so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we know Dax has worked really hard in the weight room this year. He has and training on his really speed. hard. And it's paying off. It really is. Here he goes. It's Looks it like looks a good jump. Good. <laughs> really Let's wait for that flag. It's a white flag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two good jumps. Two clean jumps. Let's see if he can improve on 1560. His personal best so far this year, 1563. Is that a personal best as well? I believe so. Oh, and there's. 1536, okay, consistent, so, yeah, consistent, definitely some consistent, very consistent. There. We like to see it. Kenneth West had a foul on his first. Kenneth West had a foul on his first attempt. Kenneth West had a foul on his first attempt. We'll see if he can make this one count. He's aiming for 1560 plus, which is our current leader, Dax Turner. Seemingly having a bit of difficulty on that second phase, but we'll see. It's a white flag. We'll see if it's enough for Kenneth West to at least buy him a few more jumps. I don't think that's going to be in the 15 meter range, but we'll take a look. While we wait for that mark over in the high jump, we have Celia Markovanovic. Clear at 166. We have seven athletes still in the competition. 1462 in the men's triple jump. So Kenneth West will likely make the final now with that jump, but certainly about a meter off of, of what he's capable of, coming in with a 1462. And in the high jump, a successful clearance for Celia Markovanovic. And Celia is coming in ranked seventh with a personal best of 169, and she matches it easily with that jump. She's very happy with that performance. In the triple jump, Lyndon Eild McCurdy on the runway now. A 1394 so far, a foul on the second round.
13.94 on first round. We'll see what he can do here with the second. Successful jumps for both athletes. High jump and triple jump. Our Guelph Griffin celebrating. That's Chloe Zaraski, 169. And that is close to her personal best. 171 is her personal best, but she is very happy to be over that height. And for Lyndon, we'll see if we can get you a measurement. In the women's high jump, Alaire Peter side, 169. Her personal best is 168. It would be nice for her to go home with a personal best and a very strong showing here. Let's see if she has two more attempts to clear this 169. In the triple jump, asking for some support from the crowd. He's had two fouls, one foul so far, two fouls so far. We're starting the third round here. And it's a red flag. So he does not register a mark in the competition. James Crawford. James coming into the competition with a 10th place ranking, personal best of 1457, and does not register a mark here today. Thank you for competing with us, James. Next up, Armin Shazadeh. And in the high jump, Emma Dale. So you're watching day three of the U Sports National Championships. We're on the field events, live coverage. Emma Dale, unsuccessful at 169. Armin Shazadeh on the triple jump, men's triple jump runway on the bottom right hand side of our screen. So we have two athletes in the women's high jump over the 169 height already. Lara Denbo is going to have her first attempt at 169 here. Lara is on the runway getting ready to jump and here she comes. Up and over. Manitoba buys and Lara Denbo is our third athlete over this height. Here comes Armand Chazadeh. A nice jump from Armand. Armand's best jump so far this year, 1466. Cadman, a miss at 169. Armin registers a 14.25, his best so far of the day. 14.31 will likely be enough to get him into the final. He's currently sitting in sixth. And now, Toby Oshikoya from the Dalhousie Tigers, currently sitting in fifth with the mark of 14.53. The top jump so far, 1560, followed by 1491, 1469, 1462. We'll see if Toby can break into that top four, top three with this jump. Toby's personal best this year is 1472. Best of the day so far, 1453. 14.05. So 14.53 will likely be enough to get Toby into that final. He's currently sitting in fifth. Top eight advanced to the final three jumps.
Women's high jump, Callista Blair, unsuccessful on her second attempt. Men's triple, we now have Owen McNeil. He has a 14.25, he's sitting in seventh place. Fouled on the second, and here is his third attempt. Incomplete jump, they'll still measure it nonetheless. This was similar to his last jump where I can't recall if he did a full completion with the 14.25. We'll see where this measures up, but he is currently sitting in seventh. That 14.25 may be enough. Here's Emma Dale, high jump. Unsuccessful on her second attempt at 169. 13.52 for Owen. His best mark of the day, 14.25 may be enough to keep him in the running. He's currently sitting at seven and top eight advance. We have a few athletes who have double fouled so far. So Tagger Jan King could knock him out of that spot. As could Patrick Hanna. Patrick Hanna is on the runway now. His best so far, 13.97. He's currently sitting in eighth place. So as of right now, Patrick makes the final but we have to wait until the end of this round to see who makes those final three jumps. Cadman, unsuccessful on her second attempt at 169. Hannah, a nice jump for a third attempt. We'll see if he betters the mark of 1397. He's currently sitting in eighth, so, so may get another shot at three, three more jumps. But we have yet to see if Tegger Janking will enter the competition. And if he does, he may take Patrick out of that eighth place spot. So Tegra will need to have a clean jump and exceed 1397 to make the final. So we now have Arwen Mathavathanen, and he is sitting in third, comfortably in the final. His first round brought him a 14.69, a run through on the second. He has a little room to play here, trying to get as close to that toe board as possible to register as long a distance as possible. Looked good. And a white flag. In the women's high jump, we are still at 169, third attempts. Peter side, unsuccessful. Callista Blair, unsuccessful. So those two athletes had the best of the day of 166, excellent performances. We have two athletes to go for third attempts, Emma Dale and Kiana Cadman. Over the bar so far, we have three athletes, Lara Denbo, Celia Markovanovic, Chloe Zaraski. Now, depending on what happens with Cadman and Dale, those will be our medalists. Here's Tegra Jan King. This is make or break time for Tegra and potentially also for Patrick Hanna, who's sitting in that eighth place spot, hoping to make three more jumps. Tegra is asking for help from the crowd with a special rhythm. Emma Dale in high jump stays in the game. So four athletes have cleared at 169. Tegra gets a white flag. Let's see what the measurement is for Tegra Jan King. To make the final, he has to be further than 1397. 1397 is what he's looking for. A minimum of 1397 for him to make the final. Unseating Patrick Hanna. And he registers a 14.85 to move into third place. And we have our fifth athlete over 169. Kiana Cadman, U of S Huskies, answers the call. She too is over 169. Five athletes moving on to 172. For these jumpers, 172 is very close to the season's best for Callista Blair, who is our uh, season leader at 173. So we are getting down to the wire here in women's high jump. We have Callista Blair, who went out at this height of 169, again changing the lay of the land. So our top seed, Callista Blair, out of the running. We have 172, Lara Denbo, 
with a season's best of 172, Emma Dale season's best 172, Chloe Zaraski season best of 171. That leaves us with Kiana Cadman coming in with a season's best of 170. And Emma Dale, I apologize, uh, Celia Mark Ivanovic coming in with a season's best of 169. So two of these athletes potentially looking at a season's best when we jump this 172. Dax Turner on the runway now. He's our current leader in men's triple jump. Lachlan Irish registered a 1454 and moved into second place. A 1454 on his last jump. His best so far, 1491. Dax is leading with 1560 in his first round, followed by a 1536. A 1536 in his second, so very consistent. Lots of room to just, just jump. Just do what he knows how to do. Dax has been working very hard this year. Lots of speed, lots of weights. And he always has fun with his events. Hope to see something big here. Beautiful jump. He's happy. It's a white flag. Dax's personal best in this event, season best 1563. He's up and down. He's looking to see. A very nice jump from Turner. 1582. A huge personal best for Dax Turner. And we have a high jump as well that was just an excellent performance. This is Waterloo. Celia Markovanovic is up and over 172. She is excited. Now she has set several people. This is a personal best for her today. And she came into this competition ranked seventh. And she's the first over the bar at 172. Fantastic performance from Celia. So now we have Kenneth West. Uh, in the men's triple jump. Kenneth West so far has had a foul and a 1462. Kenneth is capable of 1576. So while Dax Turner has set a high mark here at 1582, Kenneth West is going to chase him down and see if he can't better that 1582. It's going to be a close competition. In the high jump, the Griffin. Chloe Zaraski. She's up and over. Zaraski's over. West has rolled his ankle, it looks like, on that second phase. Let's see if he was able to get a mark. No, it's a red flag. A bit of ankle instability for Kenneth. Chloe is clean at 172. Clean at 172. And we'll see how Kenneth West fared on that one. That was a red flag. I do hope his ankle's okay. That looked like on the second phase, a little bit of a, a potential tweak there. Didn't get as much power off of that second phase. We have Emma Dale. First attempt unsuccessful. She'll have two more. So Kenneth West will still make our final. He's got a he's registered a mark of 1462. He's currently fifth. And so room for room to move for Kenneth. He comes in ranked first with a mark of 1576. He'll be chasing down Dax Turner, who is currently in the lead with 1582. And a successful high jump for Lara Denbo. So 172, we have three athletes over at 172 so far. Let's see what we can see here. Calm and very, very good over the bar. Very happy with her result. So we have three athletes over 172. Kiana Cadman will have her first attempt. Kiana coming to the bar, taking another shot at it. She, she's 
hasn't crossed the plate of the bar, so she still has time. So Kiana unsuccessful at her first attempt. She's got all of the USASC coaching crew there with her, cheering her on. We're taking a quick break from men's triple jump while the... Welcome back to the track, everybody, on the third and final day of the 2024 U Sports National Championships. This is it. We have reached the end of our time here on the track. We have two races left. One race, two different, uh, two different events. The men's and women's four by 200 meter relays. The, you know, capstone event of this whole weekend. I'm joined here by Darby Goodall, who we've heard from a number of times over the weekend. Darby, how are you? I'm feeling really good. I'm tired. Happy to be done, but I'm sure these athletes are more ready than me, so. Absolutely. <laughs> Darby, when we talked to you earlier this morning, you said you were very, uh, very excited to see these 4x4s. Four Has that excitement grown since we talked to you earlier today? Absolutely. I did a lot of 4x4s four when I was on the team, and I have to say it's one of my favorite events to run and then also just to be in the crowd for. You know, at this time of the meet, most of the events are now done, everyone's a little less stressed, and everyone's just here to cheer on their team, so there's always a lot of energy in the building when these ladies and these guys are running the 4x4. Four four. Absolutely, and just a reminder, uh, the field stream is still happening. We have men's triple jump, where currently Dax Turner, the Manitoba Bisons, is leading uh, with a very impressive jump. Uh, we also have uh, women's high jump uh, in action, and men's shot put just wrapped up, so the infield is packed. It is a very exciting time. Head over to the field stream, uh, catch those results and some good commentary about what's going on. Right now, we are focusing on the 4x400s. Four but just before that, a small update here. We're looking at the team scores, men's side, after 15 events. So heading into the final, uh, final track event, Guelph Griffin's lead with 89.5 points, Manitoba Bison 64 points, and Laval in third with 56.5 points. On the women's side, after 15 events, Guelph Griffins out front with 99 points. Western Mustangs behind them in second with 97. And the Calgary you, Calgary Dinos in third with 86. So another close uh, battle here between all three teams who we will likely be seeing, uh, or we will be seeing in these uh, four by fours. Darby, what is something people should keep an eye on here? The four by four is a bit of a unique relay, kind of mixing right between that sprint relay and that distance relay. Yeah, I think um, what you really have to be watching for is that you're going to get a lot of distance girls in this event, but then also a lot of sprinters. So if you have some teams that maybe are hanging back a little bit, you might get their sprinter athletes near the end, and then that gap can get really short really quickly. So it really is anyone's game right to the end of these relays. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the race will be run... Uh, it has a two-turn stagger out of the blocks. The first athletes will cut down coming into that home stretch. And from then forward, it will be a uh, run out of lane one. In lane one, the Toronto Varsity Blues. In lane two, the Windsor Lancers. In lane three, the UNB Reds. Numero cat, Maria Caravan. In lane five, Lakehead University. And in lane six, the Ottawa GG. That is their first of two time finals. So once again, like the four by twos, teams can place out of either of these two heats. Uh, the second section tends to be our faster seed times. However, as we've seen before, teams out of that first heat can place in there. We saw it with Laval in the 4x200, so some really exciting stuff. Right now you're seeing the top rankings uh, over the season, so these are not the qualifying times, but these are the times that they run at some point this year. So keep an eye on that, University of Guelph, University of Laval, University of SAS, who will be in our second section. 
Looks like the track is closed. We are underway here. On your marks. Clean start by the entire field here, all six athletes away. Looks like Montreal making it up a little bit of the sagger right off the go. Yeah, you definitely want to get out quick because you want to be able to cut in clean when they hit that 150 mark, and Montreal's doing just that. Here they go, hitting the break line. Athletes are cutting down. We're going to start seeing where our leads are. That looks like Windsor there at the front. Windsor, Montreal, UNB, Lakehead, GG's Toronto. Looks like Windsor trying to put on a little bit of distance. 400, obviously, two laps around for each athlete. Bit of a speed train. The Ottawa Gigi's there. making a move on the outside there. Once yeah. again, the order of the uh, second exchange is dictated based on where they are, 100 meters to go. Here we go into the handoff. Looks like a nice clean exchange for the most part. Yeah, it didn't look to be too, not too much confusion between uh, that kind of post exchange zone, which is really good. Windsor still up front. Montreal, UMB seems to be making a move up the side there on the shoulder of Montreal. That's UMB moving into second place. Windsor still up front. A very close pack still. All these ladies are right up at the front here. So anybody's aim like anything, like all these relays, it's about remaining in contact until that final exchange and that final handoff. You want to give your best, uh, your last athlete the best possible chance at, uh, at the lead. You would be making a real strong push here. Absolutely. I believe that's Katrina. She's actually Winnipeg born and she's out in UNB as well as this next athlete is Peyton who also is born in Manitoba. Bit of a home crowd. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Toronto came up from the back where they had been for a little bit there, really making a push here. UNB responding in kind, not going to make it easy. Obviously, in your, if you're in the lead, you do want to try to keep those girls on your outside shoulder. You don't want to leave too much gap on the inside to let them pass. You prefer to make them run a little bit farther than you, so she's doing a really good job holding them off. If you're seeing Toronto coming up on the inside, you can try to make an inside pass, but it is a risky move. It looks like Toronto's it moving. Is. That's Montreal making it responding as well, coming up on the outside. Overtaking UNB, coming into the home stretch here for the final exchange. We've got three teams here pulling away a little bit. That looks like Montreal, UNB, and then Toronto. Clean handoffs from both. Always important for that uh, athlete who came in and just handed off to make sure that they get out of the way as best they can. Or stay still, or just stay, don't yeah. move. <laughs> here we go, Montreal doing a quick check to see where she's at. Montreal in the lead, putting a little bit of distance between UMB, a little bit of distance. We've got a Lakehead athlete here, Amy. She was in the 600 competition, and she is a strong 400 meter runner, so you might see her coming up here on the Toronto team. Here they go. Toronto in third in this heat. Lakehead coming up fast. Montreal still holding a commanding lead. As well as UNB, they've got a bit of a gap on that third place team there, so they're doing well. But Toronto and Lakehead making up some ground. A real battle happening for third. Montreal, UNB, Lakehead now in third. Looks like it's gonna be Montreal coming in comfortably in first. UNB coming through the line in second. Lakehead, Toronto, Windsor, Ottawa. A really strong first heat. Once again, you can score out of either of these two heats. So that time is always important to uh, keep pushing the pace. Yeah, 349.5, an unofficial time, but that is a very good time to post. So well done for those girls. Yeah, a really strong performance. Lakehead really, uh, that last leg really came up, a really strong finish there. That was exciting to see. Yes. 
That cheer you just heard, uh, uh, heard uh, go up is coming from our women's high jump competition happening on our field broadcast. So make sure you check, check in there and see what's happening. Uh, we have another heat coming up here for the, for the women's 4x4. Darby, for these athletes in this second heat, you know, have they seen what just happened or are they going to try to respond in kind to the performance that was just put on? Yeah, I think a little bit they're going to be a little nervous about going into it, but these athletes are all very strong, and we did mention that this is te technically usually the faster heat, so I think these ladies are pretty locked in and focused and ready to go. Yeah, absolutely, and again, some of those teams to watch, University of Guelph, currently ranked number one in the country, uh, University, University of Laval, currently in second, uh, University of Saskatchewan in third, uh, 344.28 for Guelph, 345.10 for Laval, and 345.23 for Sass. So, it is anybody's race, really uh, a number of competitive teams all very close together in time. Yeah, and we do have six teams in this heat, so hopefully the exchanges still are as clean as that first heat was, but these ladies are going to have to work a little bit harder to make their way through those exchanges safely. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, as you've probably been seeing, those post-exchange zones can be a little bit dicey at times. Um, it's important for both, as we were saying, the incoming, the athlete who just handed off to make sure that they aren't impeding anybody, but at the same time, Sometimes you, you gotta you gotta move around a crowd a little bit, and then a smart athlete will find that path through. Yeah, it's definitely hard. You just finish a 400, you're exhausted. The first thing you're thinking about is not where do I go now. You just want to sit down and relax, yeah. but you do have to think about where is the safest place for me to clear this track so that the next teams can get through. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. The teams are taking the track now. This is the final track event for the women. Another. Another cheer goes up. That was Manitoba's Lord Dembo uh, passing a height over uh, in the high jump competition. Once again, happening on our field tree. Here, we're getting a quick recap here. There you go. Over. That was lots of space. Really strong performance happening from all the athletes in the competition still in high jump. Some really exciting stuff. Make sure you check that out. So we've got Windsor and Guelph in this competition, right? So now there are only three points, I believe, difference in the team standings. And so this race could really be the difference between that first place and second place for the overall team standings, which should be very exciting. Yes, Western and Guelph. Oh, Western, yes. Western and Guelph only separated by two points here. So yeah, absolutely a huge factor in this uh, for that team title. Uh, Guelph having won it a number of times in the past, a yes. uh, bit of a dynasty there. Uh, <laughs> but teams are always, you know, small point changes here. Certain races, it, it could be a big impact. So yeah. we're really going to be looking here. You know, it's not just this event that, you know, might be riding on it, but it is a lot more than that. We were talking a little bit before, you're going to see some distance athletes. We're going to see some sprint athletes in here. Uh, Sask, we're going to likely be seeing Avery Pearson. Yes, we will be. Who we have seen numerous times over the weekend. How, how for, from your perspective, does, because it's happening across the board, a number of these athletes we've seen either in the 300s, we've seen in the 600s, whatever it might be. How does having run those races coming into this change things? Does it in, you know, help a little bit? What's happening? I think like for me, I was more of a distance athlete that went down to the 400. So in that sense, this 400 was short-ish and less hard than some of the other races. So you're really just giving it everything you've got. Yeah. And it's not so far that you're gonna like lock up like crazy and really hurt. Like obviously it's gonna hurt, but you can usually get away with a 400. Now for those sprinter athletes who've done a lot of competition already, that is not my territory. I have no idea how they're feeling going no. into this. Cool. Track is closed. We're going to get the team announcement soon. But absolutely, those uh, sprint athletes, some really exciting stuff. You, As we've been seeing all, all, all weekend in these relays, you'll usually see a couple teams out of the gates really fast, and then a few teams kind of closing fast. So keep your eye on that in these kind of relays, which bring everybody together. Some really exciting stuff happening. Alberta Panda. In lane two, the Calgary Dino. In lane three, the Western Mustang. In lane four, the Saskatchewan Husky. In lane five, 
the Guelph Griffins. There is your final lineup for the women's 4x400 meter relay, the last female event happening on the track for this championship. tried to start from the triple jump area. Um, obviously, when the athletes are so on edge in the blocks, got to be silent so the officials are going to stand them up. We'll just reset. No charge on the field. That was coming from somewhere else. There we go, clean start here. Media looks like Sask is trying to really put some ground on her on this yes, first she, leg. She has made up that stagger already in that first turn. Once again, we're gonna be hitting the break line. Ever important to have a good position there. Set yourself up for success. It's Willems of Sask out front. Followed closely by Laval and then also Calgary. Guelph, Alberta, and then Western. You're likely going to start hearing us getting droned out by the sound of the crowds cheering. <laughs> it is electric in here. Laval was, overtaking Sask. Yes. I The noise in this during these races was, was always my favorite part about running. There's nothing else you can think about for sure. No, and it fuels these athletes. Here we go. Laval first to the handoff. Good. Nice clean Sask handoff right for those behind. ladies. Well, a little bit of a gap forming. Yes, much more spread out than that first heat. Like in the first heat, we saw all five of those teams together, but these ladies are a little more spread out here. It's important to always remain in contact as best you can. Let those next athletes have that chance to race against somebody rather than having to be competing by themselves. Laval and Sass through the line. Very close. Guelph just a little bit behind in third, Alberta, Calgary, Western. Seems to be pretty controlled here. Looks like Sask is coming up on. Sask trying to make a final push, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well done. And that's a really good move there because she can swing wide and get to her teammate who's already been lined up in second position and yeah. then get out of that exchange in front, which yeah. is a very smart move. Absolutely, that was a, a really tac tac tactical move that they made to set themselves up into that first position through the handoff. Really strong performance there from yes. Sask. We're seeing Guelph, who was a little disconnected at first, regain control of this. They're back in front. Alberta also making up some of the gap that had been put there in the last two legs. Yeah, we've now got those four athletes right at the front together. Well, fueling off the uh, cheers of their corner there. Yes. Sass making a move into this corner. Coming up a little bit. The final leg has been set. Coming into the final exchange here. Guelph, Sask, Laval. 
Here we go. Oh, a little bit of a fumble there in the handoff, but Lavelle comes out of it all right. Now this is Avery Pearson in the front here, and we also have another 600 meter run runner, uh, Favor Okapali for the Western group, which is running this leg as well. Absolutely, right now we're seeing Sask out front, followed by Guelph. Coming into this final 200, it's gonna be a race. Guelph starting to turn on the Jets. See if they can make a move. Sask responding. Favor Okapali is also responding there at the back, gunning for that third place. Yeah, absolutely, making a move past Alberta. Sask and Guelph going head to head here into the turn. Absolutely, this will be a tight finish. Avery Pearson responding to Guelph's move, seeing if she can hold them off. It looks like it might be. Sask through the line first. A strong finish by Guelph right behind, followed by Laval. An incredible performance. You're getting a look at the fans there. They are happy. There's the team celebrating. A really strong run there. Awesome stuff to see. Yeah, absolutely in that last. Avery Pearson, uh, we've seen a number of times on the podium, in the event, uh, really responding to Guelph's push in that last 150 meters. I can imagine that she's probably ready to be done running from this weekend. She has done quite a few events and a number of these athletes have. So yeah, congratulations to all of them. Absolutely. Uh, across the field, some really strong performance, some really exciting stuff happening there. Uh, just awesome to see all these athletes laid it out. And that officially concludes uh, our women's events on the track today. There you're getting a look at the time. 3.45, 37 for SAS. Guelph Griffins, 345-81. Laval, 347-77. Another cheer goes up from the high jump pit. Once again, head on over, check out those events. I believe our fastest time in that first heat was 348, correct? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. So it looks like our one, two for sure will be coming from this second heat and potentially that third place as well. Absolutely, and once again, unofficial times here that we're talking about. Check out those official times once they're up. Uh, GoBison.ca, you can check that championship banner. Really exciting race there. Uh, and as you said, not even just for the battle for first and second, there was a huge battle happening from that third place uh, with some 600 meter athletes and you know, obviously favor of Kali, who we've seen a number of times. Uh, tremendous stuff happening there. We're seeing Guelph cheer on their team in the corner from up in the booth here. I think they might be celebrating the official, unofficial lock-in of potentially their women's team banner. Uh, obviously, official scores aren't out. They're just making some educated, uh, educated uh, guesses based on positioning and finalizing and everything. Yes, so with only one event left to go, I'm pretty sure you can. They can piece it together. They kind of know estimate. where things are going to stand. Yeah. So some really exciting stuff happening there. Looks like we're getting a full list here of our 4x4, Sass, Guelph, Laval, Western, Montreal, Alberta, UMB, Calgary, Lakehead, Toronto, Windsor, Ottawa. Really strong performances from all the women there. Here we go, the final track event of the weekend, of the championship, of the year, happening right now. It's the men's 4x400 meter. The athletes are about to take the field. And we've got three heats for the men here because we've got a couple extra teams that made it into the championship. So. Yeah, absolutely, three heats coming coming in. This uh, first heat's only gonna have three teams, I believe, and then more after that. Yeah, absolutely. The challenge for this first heat, uh, this, this slightly smaller heat, is to really run your own race. Uh, you're gonna have, you know, provided everything's going according to plan, you're gonna have a lot of open space to kind of get in there, really set down a fast time because once again, Time finals, anybody can score. We've seen it happen before. It's not always out of the first heat of three, but it can be, and, and it's important for them to keep that in mind and really try to run their own race here. Yeah, and you definitely have room to run your own race, which is nice. You're not worried about those handoffs because you have lots of space going into them, so that can be a little more comforting knowing that you have a clean handoff on the line. Yeah, absolutely. It's easier to navigate that, that zone after the handoff, so yeah, it'll be exciting to see what happens here. We're going to see in this first section, we're going to get an official announcement of the teams very shortly. Uh, but it will be Laval, Huskies, and Dal Tigers uh, all here. Unofficially, we're looking at the results here of the women's 4x4. 
Sask Huskies, Guelph Griffins, Laval, Western, as we saw before. So once again, congratulations to all the women in that event and all the women who are competing this weekend as that kind of wraps out. Uh, we're still going with our women's high jump competition, so check that out. But uh, on the track side of things, that, uh, that was the end of it. So a really exciting final event to a really exciting weekend. Yes, absolutely. Be a moment here as they just get set up. Once again, two more field events are still in action. High jump, it appears that Laura Dembo is just approaching the, the line, about to take off again. And we still have the men's triple jump in action. A number of athletes still there. We're on round five of the men's triple jump competition. So things are heating up. Uh, be sure to head over to the field stream to check out all the in-depth insight that's being provided over there. We're going to talk to you a little bit about the 4x4 here. <laughs> Track is closed, and we are about to get underway with the final men's event of the weekend. 4x400, four time finals, three sections. On numero 4, Laval Rouge Or. In lane five, the Saskatchewan Huskies. In lane six, the Dalhousie Tigers. There is a starting lineup for the first heat of four, the men's four by 400 meter relay. communication happening between the field events and the track events to see who's going to go first. And it looks like the field event athlete is going to go down the triple jump runway. It's balancing. There you go. You get a good look at it. back to the track, a uh, balancing act between managing the infield and the outfield. Absolutely. all through teams. Looks like right out of the block, Dalhousie is trying to put some distance on the field. This is what we were talking about, just trying to run your own race, secure that fast time. Dalhousie through the break line first and through the line first here. Sask, then Laval. A little bit of ground being made up. Sask is overtaking Dal there. Uh, oh no, and it looks like we've had an athlete drop out from an injury on the back stretch. Looks like the Laval team is unfortunately out that of the competition here. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, Sask, handoff, Dal, fumble in a bed. That Sask athlete, possibly a longer distance athlete. The <laughs> Dal, possibly a sprinter. We saw a big start there. Yeah, you definitely see a difference in those sprinter the sprinters running the 400, they're going to go out super hard, and then they tend to slow down a little bit near the end, but the distance athletes, they're going to go out a little slower, but then they tend to finish a little bit stronger. Yeah. So that's what we were talking about earlier today. Dal in front, Sask behind. A little bit of gap space between both athletes, just trying to run their race. A challenge unto itself, kind of being out there by yourself, really a, a mental test of strength here. Absolutely, it's hard to push it in that last 50 to 100 meters of a 400 when you're tying up really hard. So good on these athletes for still keeping going. 
There we go. Handoff from the Dow oh, athletes. There goes Sask. Dow out in front with a pretty commanding lead here. About 20 meters or so. Here they come, but it appears that Sask is making up some ground. Dow through the line. Dalhousie still with the lead. Here we go into the final exchange, rounding the turn. Here we go, another clean handoff, like we said. Lots of space here, shouldn't be any issues. Yeah. Dal trying to just hold on to that lead and really push their own time here. Yeah, these athletes are definitely focused on that time, right? They know they're gonna win this heat now, but it really is important to run their own race and try to push it right to the end to try to get a good time on that. Here goes Dow, rounding the final bend, going into the final turn here. Commanding lead, coming through the line. That's Dow Hosey finishing first. Sask, right there. Next to Strong races from both at both teams. Uh, obviously, it's unfortunate. Um, not sure what happened to the Laval athlete. Hopefully, he's okay. Um, at, you know, after a long weekend, your bodies have been pushed to the limit, and it is not uh, unexpected for that type of injury to happen. Uh, hopefully, it's not an injury. Hopefully, it's something very minor. So, hopefully, yes. they're doing all right. Uh, once again, congratulations to Dal and Sass. Two really strong performances here. Unofficially, 321.7. Now we're getting set up for Heat 2. This is going to include Calgary, York, Regina, Toronto, and Waterloo. It looks like the women's high jump has now wrapped up as well. So Absolutely. the women competition is now completely over. That is it. That is all. <laughs> We're going to see if we can get the results from that. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it appears that Laura Denbo of the Manitoba Bisons uh, officially the women's high jump champion this year. Congratulations to her. Congratulations to her. Uh, right behind her from the Waterloo Warriors, Celia Markoviniak uh, in second place. Congratulations there. And Chloe Zaraska of the Guelph Griffins. So some incredible performances happening there. Uh, the winning height, 1.78 meters, followed by 1.75, followed by 1.72. Congratulations to Laura, Celia, and Chloe. Some really awesome stuff happening there. And as Darby said, that is it. That is all for the women's competition. Uh, the U Sports Track Field Championship. Darby, how would you describe what you've seen all weekend long from the women's competition? I'm impressed. I mean, I completed my last year with U Sports last year, and just in the span of one year, these women have gotten faster. They're jumping farther and higher than I ever saw when I was on the team, so I am constantly impressed by them. Yeah, absolutely. We talked a lot uh, over the weekend about the uh, constant improvement that's been happening across the country in, in, in all the programs. Uh, over the last few years, and it's really exciting to see that all distilled into one, one meet, one big performance. So really exciting stuff there. Um, definite highlight for me was watching Sienna McDonald all weekend. A tremendous athlete, uh, you know, obviously taking home the gold in pent, uh, triple jump as well. And so just, just a really awesome performance there, a number of records that she broke as well. So across the board, excellent performances from all of our athletes uh, on the women's side. I believe then that we can officially say uh, after all 16 events, the Guelph Griffins have won the women's title. 107 uh, Western Mustangs, 102 in second, University of Calgary, 87 in third. I shouldn't say official. These are all unofficial times, unofficial results for a little while, but that is what it's showing on our sque screen at the moment. Congratulations to those teams. Here we are, heat two of the men's 4x400 meter 
championship time final. We're seeing that triple jump athlete set the clap up. Looks like a foul. Yes. Foul. I can't. I always get the term mixed up. You can tell we're not yes. field athletes. <laughs> the utmost respect for the competition, uh, but unfortunately, I am I'm not knowledgeable in it. Section you know who is? Section two of the men's field four street. by four hundred final. Oof. In lane two, the Calgary Dinos. In lane three. The York Lions. In lane four, the Regina Cougars. In lane five, the Toronto Varsity Blues. And in lane six, the Waterloo Warriors. There you go, section two, men's four by 400 meter relay. Another athlete just going down the runway. They're just going to hold them for a moment here. Based on the reaction, it seems to be a very good jump. Section two of three in the time final. one field athlete walking into the official sight line so that yep. whole area does need to be clear or people need to be sitting down so that's why they've stood up here yeah absolutely you can see kind of those lanes towards the end of the 60 meter uh, the athlete sitting there is so that the starting gun official can see if anything's going wrong um, obviously there's a lot of uh, we're at the end of a long day yes lots of stuff is happening athletes are focused on their event so yeah. totally uh, totally reasonable it's all good Yes, the starter just has to have a clear sight of every single lane in case there's a false start or something. So we'll get underway shortly. Looks like we're going to reset now. Looks like they're going to let triple athlete go prior to the gun. Now, people don't often talk about the uh, work that goes into scheduling at these meets to try to, as much as we can, avoid this kind of overlap, but it always happens. Yeah, some of those triple athletes do have very long run-ups, so a lot of them are even into lane one of the track. There we go, white flag, good jump. And now we're going to get underway with the 4 by 400 meter here. Get the athletes into the blocks.
off clean serve by all the teams in this heat. Right away, it looks like the York Lions making up a ton of space. Once again, want to get that good spot when they hit that breakdown line. They're approaching it now in this turn. That appears to be Waterloo settling into second. Toronto right behind them. And Calgary, I believe, in fourth, making a move on Toronto now. Yep, the Dinos making it up on the outside. Dinos making a big push on this last corner to come into that exchange zone. And again, a very tactical move there because he doesn't have to cut back in. He can just stay swung wide to greet his teammate yeah. and then come out right in front. So yeah. great move by Calgary and, there. And, and you just saw that execution perfectly. Calgary out front uh, after being in third for the handoff position. So really strong there. Waterloo overtaking there. Calgary not wanting to lose a step on them. Staying in contact. All of these teams very close together coming through. Absolutely, Toronto coming up on the outside. Making a move past Waterloo, but Waterloo is responding. Can he hold them off? It looks like Toronto's gonna overtake. And Regina as well making a move coming up into third there. We see a line kind of forming here. Can we see the athletes spread out for the exchange here? Toronto, Waterloo. Nice clean exchange. York Dinos, Regina. We got Toronto up front, a little bit of a gap. Waterloo right behind, a little bit more of a space. And then we see our next three competitors. Here they come. Toronto, Waterloo. York, Calgary, Regina. Heading into the final exchange here. Regina making a move on the outside, or pardon me, Waterloo making a move on the outside. Going into that position, second position, handing off to the anchor runner. I believe that's Waterloo's Owen Babcock, ta Babcock taking the lead. Toronto with a big push there on the back stretch, taking over. I believe that the Waterloo anchor runner was also in the 600 earlier in the week. Uh, so we will expect to see some pushing in the last 200 meters, some speed there. Toronto, Waterloo, Regina in third, York, Calgary. Here you said, you see Waterloo starting to step out. Absolutely, he's making that final push coming into the last 100 Owen Babcock meters. going for the overtake here in the final turn. It is going to be tight. These two boys are fighting for first place here. Is Toronto going to respond? Coming down the line. It's close. That one I do not know who came in do first not want there. To shoulder to shoulder right through the yes. line. You can see the two of them. That definitely is that distance runner coming into play there, though. Yeah. He's got that strong last 100 meters, so he can push really hard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we saw Owen Babcock in the 600s earlier in the week, so you definitely see that 600 meter uh, mentality of the final 200 coming in there. Yeah. Really strong performance, but Toronto, too, that the Waterloo kick started very early, and in another world, they could have overtaken, and it was a great response by Toronto to push yes. it all the way through the line, shoulder to shoulder. Once again, we're not going to get official results up. Unofficially, 3.19.8, so a very solid time there. Very, very exciting run for that second heat. Let's get a replay. Or, pardon me. There we go. Uh. <laughs> Look at that. Shoulder to shoulder. Very close. It Ooh. looks like Waterloo may, may have gotten it, may but gotten it's it. hard to tell. We'll leave that up to the officials. They know what they're yes. doing. Some really awesome stuff there. And you can see it. There's almost that sense of, well, couldn't have done any more than that. Exactly. Whatever it ends up being, it ends up being. Yeah. You leave it all in the track, and you just hope for the best. So. Absolutely. Here we go. The gentlemen are taking the line for the last track event. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the last event of the day, I believe yes. that triple jump has now concluded so we are looking at the absolute end 
of the competition this weekend. Some super exciting stuff happening all weekend long. While they, while they get set up, we're gonna see if we can get you a final score. It'll be, uh, prior. It appears uh, out of the men's triple jump that just concluded, uh, Manitoba's Dax Turner uh, successfully capturing gold with a jump of 15.82. Right behind him, Kenneth West of the Western Mustangs uh, with a jump of 15.38. And in third, Tegra Jan King of Alberta with a jump of 15.27. Congratulations to the athletes. An incredible competition was happening in there. And you heard the crowd uh, clapping along with everybody. Some really awesome stuff happening on the field. Congrats to all three uh, medalists there. Unofficially again. We're getting unofficial <laughs> results. We don't want to... Don't take our word. No for promises. It. Yeah, <laughs> keep checking those live results as things uh, as things develop. So this is it, We're reaching the end here. The crowd, the stands here are full. We're getting a look here at the Laval athlete who unfortunately had to step off the track. Oh no! Uh, Looks like a hamstring issue potentially, which can happen in these 400 meters because these athletes are going very hard. Yeah, it's an explosive speed. Hopefully. Um, it isn't anything too serious. Too serious. Uh, they're getting him to the medical, and some great medical staff are on standby. We're going to be taking a look here at the track as we start the men's 4x400 meter. Once again, this is it. This is all uh, the final event of the weekend, the final race of the weekend, the final heat of the weekend, and the track is now closed. And it is all, it is the beginning of the end right here. <laughs> In lane two, the Guelph Griffins. In lane three, the Windsor Lancers. In lane four, the Western Mustangs. In lane five, the Alberta Golden Bears. And in lane six, the Manitoba Bisons. There you go, a little horns up from the Bisons. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the very end of the 2024 U Sports National Championships. Very exciting here. It's gonna be a good race to end it on. The crowd is packed around the track. They all know what this race means. People are already on their feet in the stands. <laughs> start here Alberta immediately taking the lead here really making up that crown Western following suit now there's six teams in this heat so hopefully there isn't too much traffic coming into this cut down no nope. it yep. looks like Guelph out front then Windsor and Alberta Montreal Western and Manitoba You see Manitoba moving to the outside, it appears, in the back. Guelph, Windsor, Alberta. Definitely a bit of separation forming there in those first three teams. Once again, we see that excellent handoff maneuver here. Very clean. Mostly clean handoff. We're going a little bit of fumbling in the back there, but all the teams are out okay. We definitely have two packs now. We have our lead pack, including Guelph, Alberta, and Windsor. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a challenge to make up that gap. But if those three teams in the back can work together to close it, then they still have time. Absolutely. It looks like 
Keenan Allen of the Bisons is moving up into that fourth place position. Yes. Now a lot of these athletes, some of them didn't compete all weekend, so some of them are quite fresh going into this 4x4, four four, and Absolutely. they are ready to go. Here we go. Keenan Allen being one of them, and he is definitely pushing there in fourth place. Here we go, Alberta making a big push into the exchange, giving everything he's got into the handoff. A little bit of a bump between athletes there. And Manitoba has reconnected themselves with that front pack, and this is Dawson Mann, a very strong athlete, so we'll see what he can do in that fourth place there. But yeah. Guelph, Alberta, and Wins are still in 1-2-3. Guelph really holding a commanding lead. These athletes are putting it all out there. We've seen them a number of times over the weekend. In the three, in the six, in the eight. Here they go. Guelph opening up a gap even further on Alberta. Wins are making up some ground. Here goes Guelph, coming into the last exchange here, and they are opening it up with every step. They sure are. One more athlete to go for each of these teams, and they are going to give it everything they've got. A terrific handoff by Guelph. And, and there. Manitoba made a move there, passing Windsor in the handoff, so excellent strategy there by Dawson Mann. Absolutely. Guelph way out in front here. Alberta, Manitoba, Windsor battling for that third place spot. Alberta is definitely coming up on Guelph there, and the Guelph athlete keeps looking back to see how far he has. Alberta really closing the gap on Guelph. A very strong form from Alberta. It, it looks like Guelph is maybe injured, which is a little unfortunate. Something appears to be wrong with yes. Guelph, and you never want to see that in this kind of event. No. But like we said, it does happen. Manitoba making a move there, pushing into second place as well as Windsor. The Manitoba crowd going nuts here. Alberta coming down. Al Manitoba making a move, but it won't be quite enough. There goes Alberta. Still Alberta a, through the line first. Still an excellent push from Manitoba, going back from fourth place all the way up into second. So that's really wonderful for that team. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully that Guelph athlete is yes. doing okay. Obviously. Uh, it appeared to be an injury. Uh, you never like to see that in this ki kind of event. As we said, it can happen with these explosive speed. Uh, but looking back, congratulations to Alberta. Uh, the clock is still running. The race is, however, over. Please, yes. please disregard that. <laughs> congratulations to Alberta. A really strong performance from them. They they were fighting every step of the way. Absolutely. Um, never gave up, and that really showed there. You can see they're celebrating. Manitoba as well, as you said, to come back from sixth place in that first leg all the way up into to third, or second, pardon me, really exceptional work from that, that team. Even so. that Guelph athlete, you can see how much those team points and that team competition really does mean to these yeah. athletes. He's hurting, and he was hurting around 250 meters in, so he still had 150 meters to go, and he did it because he yeah. knows he's gonna get those team points as well as his teammates who just ran and he wants to be there for them. Yeah. So very good job for him and hopefully he can recover quickly yeah. from that. Absolutely, no doubt about it. That was uh, some pure grit there. Yeah. Um, really impressive stuff. You're hearing the Alberta cheers here. Winning the gold of that final event of the meet is an exceptional feeling and congratulations to the teams. Congratulations to all the teams here as we've reached the end of the event. Some exceptional performances this weekend, some really standout stuff. As you've been saying, it, it, even in the last year, in the last five years, the performances have just continued to get better and we are seeing that here. Uh, so thank you for joining us uh, for the events all weekend. Once again, we're going to be staying live for the podium, uh, the podiums, which will happen very shortly, but that is the end of our competition. Uh, Darby, do you have anything else you would like to add here at the very end of the 2024 U Sports National Championships? Uh, just a big congratulations to all the athletes who competed. Everyone did an excellent job, and you should all be so proud of yourself for making it this far. So very well done for those athletes. And it is a little sad being on the other side of it, but I'm glad that I was able to participate in a little bit of a different way. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit different when you're that first year out. Uh, and for some of these athletes, this will be them next year uh, experiencing that. So congratulations to all the athletes who are in their fifth year who will be graduating, and this was their final U Sports. And to those athletes who this might have been their U first U Sports, good Absolutely. luck. It's going to be a wild ride for the next few years, uh, and we wish everybody good luck. Take we it all in because it goes fast, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. Alrighty, we will be back shortly for the podium events. Uh, until then, I've been Connor Boyd with you all weekend. Thank you for joining us at the 2024 U Sports National Championships.
Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Faites-le. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Byrne, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team.
the Director of Alumni Relations here at the Uni University of Manitoba, but more... Please welcome the athletes from the women's triple jump. Your bronze medalist from the Saskatchewan Huskies with a jump of 12.23, Olamide Olaluku. Your silver medalist from the Windsor Lancers with a jump of 12.57, Mandy Brunette. There we go, we're looking at the women's triple jump and champions. And your 24U sport champion from the Western Mustangs with a jump of 12.72, Chloe Knox. Really incredible performances out of the field events this year. Olamide Olaloku came in last minute off for that third place spot. Very exciting. And Chloe Knox had commanding leads throughout the, throughout the triple jump competition. Some really awesome stuff there. Perfect. Look at that. Look at those medals, terrific stuff. Athletes. Congratulations to the three Please welcome the women's, women's triple jump athletes. Congratulations to, the to them. From the St. Mary's Huskies with a throw of 1096, Kathleen Pegg is your U Sport champion for 2024. A fantastic showing for Kathleen, well done. Congratulations, Kathleen. Last call, coach of the year ballots, last call. Please welcome your medalists in the men's pair of shot put. Men's pair of shot put coming up here. Your 2024 U Sport champion from Moncton, Remy Ouellet, with a throw of 837. Remy set a season's best with that 837 throw, so congratulations. congratulations. Really awesome to see at the end of the season. Please welcome our second medalist in the men's pair shot put in a different category. From Laval, with a throw of 1135, Mathieu Doré. Congratulations. You are a 2024 champion. Please welcome your medalist in the men's shot put. Your bronze medalist from the Western Mustangs with a throw of 16.53, Seth Edwards. Here we go, this is men's shot put. Your silver medalist from the Windsor Lancers with a throw of 16.85, AJ Stanett. And your 2024 champion from Moncton with a throw of 17.40, Samuel Bork. The men's shot put was a really exciting competition. And AJ Stan is a son of a team Canada thrower. Athletes. Oh, Discus cool. thrower. Congratulations to those athletes. A really good showing this year. Welcome your medalist in the four by 800 meter women's event. Four by eight was a really exciting run this year. A little biased as I like the four by eight, but very exciting last night. Very exciting end to the day. Having been on the field 
uh, feed all weekend. I feel as though I've watched no track at all <laughs> other than to see it flashing by. Your bronze by. medalist in the women's 4x800 meter relay, the University of Western Ontario in a time of 8.50.79. And was this an exciting race as it was going down? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah a really strong competition uh, by all three of these teams um, right to the bitter end. So it was a really exciting race to end off last night. I did hear the cheering. The silver medalist from Laval in a time of 8.46.30. There we go. There, Silver medalist Laval there taking the podium. At a time of 8.46, a really strong performance from them. And your champions for the 2024 U Sports 4x800 meter women's, the Saskatchewan Huskies. They're really strong. You, it, we saw a number of these women also just compete in the 4x4 as well. And I see. Saw them throughout the weekend. and A, a really strong close by the Huskies uh, to capture gold yesterday. Congratulations, athletes. Last call for coaching ballots, please. Last call. If you have any Coach of the Year ballots, can you please turn them in? Please welcome the medalist in the men's 4x800 meter relay. Another really exciting performance yesterday. Uh, we talked about it a lot, but these four by eights are never decided Your until that very end, from the often in the last 300 meters. So. In the time of this race really was a testament of that. A really strong performance from UNB. And one of the last races of the day on day two? The last race of the day, yeah. A good way to end off a Friday, that's for sure. In a time of 7.30.60. Your silver medalist, the Regina Cougars. Regina often competitive at the four by eight, pretty much every year. Uh, really exciting to see them on the podium. Exciting to see and all And your 2024 U Sports Absolutely. champions in a time of 7.28.99, the Guelph Griffins. And some of these athletes from the Guelph team were also running their 4x4, four four, it looks Ran like. Ran their 4x4. Four four. We saw a lot of them in the 15. Or Max Davies specifically also won the 1500 meter. We'll see him later. Incredible. Uh, really incredible performance. Uh, he won a number of golds this weekend. Uh, I believe he was also the 1000 meter champion. Athletes. A so really strong team performance all the way through. Absolutely. Welcome to the podium, your medalist in the women's 4x200 meter relay. Four by twos feel like they're forever ago, but they're just this afternoon. It has been a very exciting day on the track. The bronze medalist in the time of 138.01, the University of Calgary. Silver medalists in a time of 137.26, Laval. And your 
2024 U Sport Champions in the time of 136.90, the Guelph Griffins. The only team to go under that 137 barrier in the event, a really exceptional performance by the team. Congratulations, athletes. Please welcome to the podium your medalist in the men's 4 by 200 meter relay. As always, sound like a broken record, but another really exciting fan uh, today. Men's Uni four University by two. relays always are. Always exciting. Bring out the whole crowd, and you know you can't see it here, but the whole crowd is gathered in front of these Your podiums to celebrate these athletes. The time of one twenty-seven eighty-seven, the Alberta Golden Bears. They really are to me the highlight event of oh, the yeah. sports, uh, just given the team aspect of it, yeah. and the uh, the uh, extra boost from the cheer, cheering yeah. component. Well, and, and you saw it in that 4x4, four four, uh, you know, unfortunately that Guelph athlete who, who suffered an injury midway through. Yeah. But that team mentality really drove him to finish the line. So and really commendable performance in a time there. of 127.75, the Windsor Lancers. The 4x2 is always exciting to watch to see the different types of approach to the distance. You have some gentlemen coming from the 300, some coming from the mm -hmm. 60, kind of meeting in the middle, and it's a really exciting performance. Congrats to all of these athletes. And your 2024 U Sport champions in a time of 127.11, the Western Mustangs. Congratulations, athletes. Start off the Western W. <laughs> it's good to see. athletes today set personal bests in the women's high jump. Nothing better at the end of the season, really just knowing that you put it all out there and achieve more than you had when Your you came in. Yeah. Really exciting. From the Guelph Griffins with a jump of 172, Chloe Zareska. An incredibly competitive field. Your silver medalist from the Waterloo Warriors with a jump of 175, Celia Markovinovich. And your 2024 U Sport champions from the Manitoba Bisons with a jump of 178, Lara Denbo. Nice cheer going up from the hometown crowd. Always nice to see a Bison on the podium, obviously. A little Absolutely. bias being Bisons, but. Now we have to give a special mention. Celia came from seventh to second. Really incredible performance. Congratulations. Her personal best before today was 169 and she finished with a 175. Really awesome, and again, it's a testament to these championships that Please anything can happen, podium, uh, and what is on paper when you come in here, years. not always the uh, how it's gonna shake out in the end, so really exciting stuff. Your bronze so medalist true. from Laval in a time of 129.45, Emma Dagenet. Your silver medalist from Saskatchewan in a time of 129.39, Avery Pearson. And your 2024 U Sport champion in the time of 128.64 from the Western Mustangs, Faber Akpali. 
really exciting 600 uh, to see. And we've seen these athletes a number athletes. of times uh, throughout the weekend in different events, be it the four by or the relays or Avery Pearson in the thousand. Very exciting stuff. The 600 is one of the hardest races there is. Yeah, definitely biased as a distance athlete, but I, I agree. It is an extraordinary challenge. Meters. Congratulations to them. It's a 400 meter hanging on, and that's hard. Yeah. A sprint at that length is incredible. This is another one of the Bison double podiums Your that we've seen over the weekend. The time of 118.44 from the Manitoba Bisons, Dawson Mann. Your silver medalist in the time of what 1830 from the Dalhousie Tigers, Zach James. And your U Sports 2024 champion in the time of 11796 from the Manitoba Bisons, Tristan Allen. Another really exciting event really decided in those last few meters as people yeah. were fighting the whole way. Um, Tristan really put on a lot of space athletes. in that last lap, so really exciting to see. Please welcome to the podium your medalist in the men's triple jump. Your bronze medalist from the Alberta Golden Bears in a jump of 15.27, Tegra Jan King. And Tegra came in in the fourth place spot at, in his ranking, so he broke into that podium. A lot to be proud of for Tegra. Medalist, silver medalist from the Western Mustangs in a jump of 15.38, Kenneth West. A great showing from Kenneth today. And your 2024 U Sport champion with a jump of 15.82, from the Manitoba Bisons, Dax Turner. So Dax had the gold medal clinched on his first attempt for the jump of 1560 and bettered it in the finals with a 1582, a personal best, a Manitoba record, I believe. Really exciting to see records. at the championships. And he's got a big smile on his face. Three wonderful competitors in that triple jump. What a way to finish off the field events with that much excitement. A great group of athletes. Please welcome your medalists in the women's 1500 meter. Your bronze medalist in a time of 424.97 from the Guelph Griffins, Julia Agostinelli. It was another really exciting, fun race to watch. It was. Uh, your silver medalist from the Alberta Pandas in a time of 424.55, Olivia Cooper. It was a really strong race from the whole field, and, and it was just awesome to see everybody really laying and out on the track. And your 2024 U Sport champion in a time of 423.57 from the Guelph Griffins, Cameron Ormond. Congratulations, athletes. Welcome the medalist in the men's 1500 meter. Another strong performance for Max Davies here. From uh, the entire field, um, Max really took off with it. In Your bronze second medalist half. in a time of 345.18 from the Regina Cougars, Jonathan Podbielski. Your silver medalist from Laval in a time of 344.76, Jean-Simon Degagne. And your 2024 U-Sport champion in a time of 344 even, Guelph Griffins, Max Davies.
Congratulations, athletes. It says by uh, Sean's name that it was four minutes. It, it was, was not. Three. It, it was, was three, three minutes. Was uh, <laughs> really, uh, three re hyper talented athletes, these gentlemen right here, uh, being able to lay down such fast times. Please welcome the medalists in the women's four by 400 meter relay. Feels like they were just on the track a minute ago. Your bronze medalist in a time of 347.77, Université de Laval. This was another race. It was a fight from start to finish between all the teams uh, and really came down to really strong composure in that last 200. And uh, it was a really awesome race between Guelph, uh, Saskia, and Laval. And I believe Laval, pardon me. And your 2024 U Sport champions in a time of 345.37, the Saskatchewan Huskies. Congratulations, athletes. Shout out to all of the Saskatchewan alumni watching online. I've received messages from you guys. Great to see you supporting your, your team. Yeah, it's been great to, great to have people from all across the country watching this weekend and supporting, um, you know, a lot of local talent. I know that a lot of the schools have athletes, you know, from their hometowns and everything, yeah. and, and it's awesome to see these Canadian programs the develop. And, and we can't all travel to be together, so it's yeah. great to have we this online option. We will be back to that medal presentation shortly. In the meantime, we will move towards the Athletes of the Meet Awards. As you just heard, the men's 4x4 uh, results are not technically official yet. Um, they will be scored very shortly. And For the women, the that. Athlete of the Meet from the University of Calgary. Sienna McDonald. This was well earned. Yeah, I would not call this uh, result a big surprise. Um, Sienna has just had a absolutely unbelievable weekend. A number of U Sports records broken, I believe. Incredible. Gold in the pentathlon, golden triple jump. Uh, long jump and long high jump. jump. Pardon no, me. Long jump. Long jump, high ha jump, pentathlon. Long jump hurdles. Hurdles. <laughs> Jeez, I'm losing it on where I'm at. Give her the triple jump. Give her the It's that pentathlon <laughs> is really mixed up. It, it really is. Max Davies. Well earned as Another well. Another one, yeah. Fantastic performances from Max all weekend. You got to watch him on the track yeah, a number of times. Yeah, just a phenomenal athlete. Um, unbelievably confident in his abilities. Um, he comes onto that track and he knows what he's there to do and he, he goes out to do it. So. I love it. Congratulations to Max and Sienna again. Yes. Uh, both incredibly talented athletes. Moving on to your coaches of the year. For the women's teams, from the University of Calgary, Jessica Zelinka. That's, that's wonderful. Jessica Zelinka is just, has always been such a, uh, a household name around the track and field uh, community. We love to watch her compete. I love to compete with her uh, when we were all in university in the early 2000s. She's a fun person to compete with, always a lovely person to talk with. She's such a good coach. She keeps everything organized for the Dinos team. <laughs> Just a vibrant individual, as you can tell. Yeah. And former team Congratulations. Multi-event Dynamo, Jessica Zelinka. And you can see the love that her team has for her there uh, in the crowd. And your coach of the year from the University of Guelph, Jason Kerr. Also an excellent choice. 
Yeah, a really talented coach. You know, it comes through in the performance of the athletes across the spectrum. Um, always calm, always personable, always yeah. easy to talk to. He's, he's the calm in the storm for a lot of these athletes. The coaching staff from across the country are phenomenal, and so many of them have decades of experience yeah. as athletes and as coaches, and here they are giving back to their home universities and mentoring and leading a whole new generation we ask for your patience of while athletes we continue to and potential coaches among these the athletes. Remaining yeah, absolutely. At this event. As you just heard, they're just tallying up the final results, um, hinging sort of on the men's 4x4. Um, and until that gets confirmed, then we also can't confirm any team scores officially, um, unofficially. Well, we won't even go into it, but it'll, it'll be confirmed very shortly, so uh, your patience there is appreciated. So you're just watching the final, final wrap-up of the 2024 U-Sports Track and Field Championships. We're here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we're just waiting for the team championship presentations as well as the men's 4x4. Stand by, and we'll bring you that as soon as we have them.
some final results, so if you would like to reconvene in the middle of the track here, we'll be presenting those shortly. Welcome the medalists in the men's 4x400 meter relay to the podium. We thank you for your patience to ensure we have all of this accurate. Your bronze medalist in a time of 319.03, the Windsor, La Windsor Lancers. bronze medalist in the time of 317.22, the Manitoba Bisons. And your 2024 U Sport champions in a time of 316.83, the Alberta Golden Bears. Congratulations, athletes. to announce the team awards. With a total of 87 points, the University of Calgary. Please come up and receive your medals.
Congratulations, athletes. We're now going to announce the men's bronze medalist in the team event. the men with a total of 56.5 points Laval Rouge et Or Please come get your medals Félicitations tous les athlètes. the silver medalist for the women. With 102 total team points, the Western Mustangs. Congratulations, athletes. Next, we'll be presenting the silver medalist for men. With a score of 82 points, the Manitoba Bisons. Please come and collect your medals.
congratulations athletes and staff. Total of 115 points. The Guelph Griffins. Congratulations, athletes. With just seven and a half points more than second, your gold medal men's team for 2024, the Guelph Griffins. <laughs> 